Alexander wore only a towel around his waist, revealing his six-pack. Water droplets were running down his muscular chest. He knew Samantha wasn't asleep because of the rhythm of her breathing. In less than two days, she had lost a significant amount of weight. Her already thin face was even leaner, and she looked a little haggard. He squatted down beside the bed and kissed her forehead. Her eyelashes trembled slightly. I'll take you to the engagement banquet tonight, he said. She didn't speak or open her eyes, not indicating agreeing or disagreeing. Anyway, she thought, he's going to do whatever he wants to, no matter what I say. It's a waste of energy for me to express my opinion. Alexander noticed that her face didn't look healthy. In fact, her whole body looked sickly. He left the room and called Jack. Jack contacted Ava to see if she had time to chat with Samantha. She hurriedly agreed, and he sent a car for her. Ava had been worried about Samantha, but she had thought it best not to contact her again. In a short time, Ava arrived at Rock Hill Manor. When she first caught sight of the building, she was taken aback, even though she had grown up in a wealthy family and was used to seeing luxurious houses. It's like the noble manners of Central Europe, she thought, staring at it in awe. Miss Dawson, this way, please, Jim said when she arrived. He led her into the main building. Ava didn't have a good opinion of Alexander because she knew he wasn't treating her friend well. She was surprised when she saw him standing by the floor-to-ceiling windows in the living room. Alexander? she asked. After saying his name, images of the masked man in the hospital flashed through her mind. Can this handsome man be the same person? she thought. She narrowed her eyes and asked, Are you Sam's husband? Miss Dawson, you're as smart as ever, he replied. She looked at him suspiciously. It can't be, she thought. This is the guy we met at the pool hall. But he does have the same name and age as the man in the hospital. It's just that their attitudes towards Sam seem completely different. If she had not seen him there at Rock Hill Manor, she would never have believed that the handsome man in front of her was the same man who was rumored to be ugly and sick. Samantha was still lying on the bed, unable to sleep. All of a sudden, she heard someone knock on the door. The door opened, and a staff member said, Mrs. Brown, there's Miss Dawson here to see you. Will you come out, or will you prefer that I send her in here? Ava? Samantha thought, shocked. What's she doing here? She jumped off the bed and ran out the door and down the corridor. She saw a familiar face standing in the living room. Ava was wearing a long black dress, and Samantha thought she looked exceptionally graceful. She was standing a few feet in front of Alexander. Sam! Ava cried out when she saw her. Although the two of them had only met a few days earlier, Samantha was excited to see her in her home. She ran down the spiral staircase. Alexander frowned slightly and quickly walked over to her in case she was hurt. She wasn't fully recovered, and after taking a few steps, she felt her legs give out from under her. Seeing that she was about to fall, Alexander reached out to catch her. She fell into his arms before she could stop herself. He lifted her by the waist before gently scolding her for her carelessness. Why are you running? Where are your shoes? He asked. I forgot, she replied. I haven't changed my clothes yet. She was still wearing her red satin pajamas. Samantha didn't want to talk to him, so she quickly turned to Ava, who was still standing in the same spot and looking at her, smiling. Samantha flashed her a friendly smile and forgot all about the coldness she felt when she looked at Alexander. He was a little bit surprised about being brushed off and pursed his thin lips. He held back his anger and asked the staff to bring down Samantha's shoes as well as a robe to cover herself. He helped her over to the couch and wrapped the robe around her, a solemn look on his face. Then he left the room so they could have some privacy. Ava slightly raised her eyebrows. She didn't know if Alexander's concern was sincere or if he was putting on a show. There's nothing in this world more terrifying than a man with no heart, she thought. Ava, why are you here? Samantha asked. She was pleasantly surprised to see her friend. After she had asked, she realized that Alexander hadn't been wearing his mask and that Ava must have figured out his secret. 
Ava, he... She started to say, pointing in the direction he left in. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hide this from you. Forgive me. As they were talking, the housekeeper served them some fancy imported fruit and desserts. Don't be silly, Ava said. You don't need to apologize. She completely understood Samantha's dilemma. Alexander didn't want others to know his identity, so if she told anyone, she would get herself in trouble. I had no idea, Ava said. She realized that Noah and Eric were also keeping it quiet, and she concluded that Alexander must be powerful. This is such a big secret to hide, she thought. How could she keep something like that under wraps? Are you feeling any better? She asked, looking Samantha up and down. She seems to be in good spirits, she thought, but I can tell she's not 100% yet. Much better, actually. I was just a little unwell. It's not a big deal, Samantha replied. She didn't want her to worry too much. She didn't mention anything about the last time they had seen each other when Alexander had forcefully taken her away, and Ava didn't ask about it either. I won't say anything, Ava thought. It's none of my business. So, Ava, you haven't told me. Why have you come? Samantha asked again. I heard you're not in a very good mood these days, she replied while taking a bite of tiramisu that the maid had brought. Alex asked me to come and chat with you. Ava still didn't like Alexander. He seemed to her to be a tyrant, and she didn't like how he treated her friend. And again, she thought, I'm not surprised. Mike also pretended to be a dog when I first met him. Isn't that how he got me to follow him around like a puppy dog? Samantha's heart skipped a beat as she realized something. She thought Alex let Ava enter Rock Hill Manor and meet him with his real identity. I don't know what he's up to, but it means something. She looked upstairs in the direction he had gone, and for a moment was lost in deep thought. Ava wasn't stupid. Even if Alexander had invited her to Rock Hill Manor, her opinion hadn't changed about him, and she wasn't about to defend him to Samantha. The women chatted for about two hours. When Samantha looked like she was starting to get tired, Ava got up to leave. Samantha was also about to stand up to see her friend out, but Ava gently pushed her back down on the couch. I can see you're not feeling well, she said. Don't worry about me. I'll find my own way out. Sit down and relax. Samantha's face turned red. Do you... you know? She asked, too embarrassed to say it out loud. Sam, I could tell that you were walking funny, Ava said, rolling her eyes at her friend and hugging her. She's so innocent, she thought. Samantha didn't know what to say. After a moment, she quietly asked, You can tell, huh? Well, it's not like I don't have experience, she replied. Her words trailed off as a memory came to her mind. Then, after a moment, her mood became lighter, and she said, Sam, I should get going. Call me if you need anything. Okay, Samantha replied. She smiled and nodded her head. She thought about what Ava had just said. What did she mean, it's not like I don't have experience? She knitted her brow, thinking about the man who had been Ava's bodyguard two years earlier. I remember he was quite handsome, yet arrogant and wild, she thought. What was his name again? Mike, that's it. He was pretty protective about her receiving love letters. I always wondered what he was about. Ava paused on her way out to look upstairs. She let out a sigh and thought, if Lily knew that the person behind the rumors was this handsome man, I bet she would kick herself. Although, looks aren't the most important thing in life. Just look at Mike. In fact, this whole situation reminds me a lot of him. Ava got into the car that was waiting for her, and she was still thinking about Mike as it pulled through the outer gate of Rock Hill Manor. Not far away, parked outside the manor, there was a heavy-duty, armored SUV. The back window was open a crack, and smoke was coming out from the person smoking inside. Standing outside of it was a determined-looking man, sporting a buzz cut and wearing a basic low-profile suit. It was Mike's confidant, James, and he was looking towards the gates of Rock Hill Manor. As soon as Ava's car was in sight, he looked up. When he saw through her back window, he smiled and waved at her. 
Miss Dawson, is that your friend? Would you like me to stop? The driver asked her respectfully. No, it's okay. You can continue driving, she answered politely. James received a strange look from her driver as he drove away. He was silent for a few seconds before he said to the person inside the car, Mike, Ava didn't seem to see us. The car just drove away without stopping. The man inside sneered. Impossible, he thought. She just didn't want to see us. Don't just stand there. Go after her, he ordered. Ava had a bad feeling. She looked in the rearview mirror and saw that the armored car had started to follow them. Sir, could you please let me off at the fork in the road up ahead? She asked the driver. I'll have my friend come and pick me up later. Yes, miss, the driver replied after hesitating for a moment. He guessed that her decision had something to do with the SUV behind them. But if your friend doesn't come, you can call me and I'll come back to get you. Okay, thank you, she said. After dropping her off, the driver returned to the direction he had come, and the armored SUV pulled over in front of Ava. James got out of the car and ran over to her. Ava, didn't you see me back there? He asked. I thought for sure you'd have noticed the car. Didn't you say that it's your favorite? What do you think? Ava looked at the back seat with a cold smile. She could only see a dark shadow inside. She thought, something tells me there's a face on the other side of that window that I don't want to see again in this lifetime. A pair of sharp eyes were looking at her like a hunter looks at their prey. I love it, she finally said. Who wouldn't love a wild beast of a car like this? It must have cost a fortune. Her smile widened, but there was no hint of a smile in her eyes. I couldn't even afford a tire on this thing, she said. James could hear the regret in her words. He gave her an awkward smile. Ava had once been able to get whatever she wanted from her wealthy family, not only because her parents were divorced and she had many aunts and uncles, but also because her brother was in charge of everything and treated her like a princess. She started to get lost in her thoughts. I fell from my high life all because of the person sitting inside this SUV, she thought. Well, I guess you could consider him an accomplice. You seem a little distracted, James said, pretending not to understand the reason she had become so pensive. Ava was becoming increasingly irritated. She thought, I could have been home by now after a comfortable ride, but because of this man, here I am. I was just thinking that if I hadn't been so young and innocent to be deceived by your boss's handsome face, I wouldn't have fallen into the state I'm in now, she said, giving him a fake smile. I guess she's not very happy to see him, James thought. He knew that when she was angry, she had a very short fuse. He didn't want to cross the line with her. He braced himself for her reaction and said with a smile, Ava, would you still have taken a liking to him if he wasn't handsome? You mean if he had small eyes, a flat nose, and a sausage mouth, but was extraordinarily talented, would I still have been attracted to him? Is that your question? She asked. Maybe I should have kept my mouth shut, he thought. Before Ava finished speaking, the back window of the SUV started rolling down, revealing the man inside. Under the warm sun that was shining into the window, his facial features cast a faint shadow. His face was very thin, with sharp, angular features. He had thin lips, eyes that were deeply set, and a nose that was high and straight. He had an arrogant look in his eyes. He's even more good-looking than he was back then, Ava thought. God, how could I have been so stupid? Mike, I'm sorry. I wasn't talking about you, she said, putting on an impeccable smile to casually gloss over her comments. Mike looked at her calmly. His chiseled face didn't show the slightest bit of emotion. As she looked back at him, she thought, he emits a kind of coldness, but one that's completely different from Alex's. Whereas Alex seems to act in a way that's aloof and superior, Mike's coldness comes directly from his soul, as though he walks in darkness all year round. But there's also a ray of light inside him, she considered. I never understood it, but I felt it. It's there. She looked at James and made a parting gesture. Seeing that she was about to leave, Mike finally spoke up. Get in the car, he said flatly. 
Ava's back was facing him. Her footsteps paused slightly, but she continued forward as if she hadn't heard him. Ava, you can see that the traffic is very heavy. Can we give you a ride? James asked as he stopped her, his eyes pleading with her. Mike had always been secretly protecting Ava. He had finally decided to reach out to her and wouldn't let her leave just like that. When James offered her a ride, the fake smile on her face froze for a moment, and then it disappeared completely. Keep it together, Ava, she thought, as she tried to keep her emotions in check. She turned around and asked James, Why does Mike want to give me a ride anyway? Mike had been by Ava's side for over two years, not counting the period that he had been secretly protecting her. He had come to understand her very well and could read the look on her face. He knew that behind her fake smile, she was incredibly angry. But he thought that she still looked stunning. With her beautiful face and curvy figure, just one look was enough to make Mike weak in the knees. I don't deserve to ride in the same car as him, she said sarcastically. Besides, I'm the daughter of his enemy. I wouldn't dare. Get in the car, he ordered, raising his voice slightly. Inside the car, where she couldn't see, his hands were clenched into fists. The vein on his temple was bulging, and he was trying his best to maintain his composure. I'll get in the car if Mike gets out of the car. I think that's reasonable she said to James, loud enough so Mike would hear. I don't think anyone with the last name Dawson would feel very safe in the same car as him. She knew that he wasn't about to leave his car. After making her point clear, she turned around and started to leave again. Then she heard the sound of a door opening and closing behind her. She was burning with anger. She quickened her pace, but was soon pulled back and thrown into the car by force. She tried to throw a punch at her assailant, but Mike grabbed her wrist before she could swing it at him. Then she tried to kick his lower body, but he held her down firmly with his legs. She couldn't move. Out of nowhere, he started kissing her intensely. James silently turned around and pretended not to see anything. Ava tried desperately to free herself from his embrace, but she couldn't manage to escape. He forced his lips onto hers and his tongue into her mouth. She was struggling to breathe. After a while, she got her opportunity. A cold look flashed across her eyes, and she bit down as hard as she could. Mike cried out. He felt blood spreading from the tip of his tongue, but he didn't stop. James looked up at the sky and watched as two birds flew past. He could hear the sound of passionate kissing coming from inside the car. What have I done to deserve this? He thought. Just as he was cursing his life, he heard a loud slap. James opened the door to see that his boss had just been slapped. His face still turned to one side, and his expression was one of fury. But James knew that he wouldn't do anything to hurt Ava. She was the only person in the world that could get away with slapping him. Mike, let me go! She yelled, wiping her mouth and glaring at him with hate in her eyes. You're the only person in the world who would dare to slap me, he growled. A bit of blood flowed out from the corner of his mouth, and he licked it away. The wound didn't affect the way he spoke. Ava flashed a malicious grin. She said, I'll slap any man that dares to force himself on me, and you're lucky that it was just a slap. She had a bad temper, but she didn't usually turn to violence. His eyes were filled with emotions. He felt himself losing control as her anger toward him grew. He suddenly let go of her hand and said to James, who was trying his best to be invisible, Take her home. James got back into the car, and they drove back in silence. In the back seat of the spacious SUV, there was a faint smell of tobacco that hadn't completely dissipated. Ava looked at the ashtray beside her. She frowned, and she counted more than ten cigarette butts. Mike hadn't ever smoked when they were together. After two years of not seeing each other, he had developed all kinds of bad habits. Through the rearview mirror, she saw his cold, hard eyes watching her, as if he knew she would look at that moment. She rolled her eyes and covered her face in annoyance. The silence from the back seat was scaring James. He turned around once in a while to check that everything was okay. James knew that Mike wouldn't have let Ava walk back. The only time in his life that he could have been cruel to her was two years earlier. He decided to speak up for his boss. 
He said, Ava, two years ago, you might have thought that Mike left you flat out, but nothing could be further from the truth. He was very hurt at that time. In fact, no one was even allowed to mention the name Ava Dawson in front of him for a long time. She pretended not to hear him. James didn't speak again until he dropped Ava off at her apartment. He walked to her front door, and as they were finally alone, he said, Ava, Mike really hasn't been okay the last two years. She gave him a look like she didn't care. She asked, Do you think I've been okay? I didn't mean, he started to say before she cut him off. Actually, I'm doing fine, she said. He thought to himself, Right, you're doing fine, but you're always alone at Christmas and New Year's, and you can't even afford to buy yourself a car. You've also been taken advantage of by all kinds of men. That doesn't sound fine to me. Ava, allow me to say something, he said. He felt that he needed to step in and help repair the damage between the two of them. Mike has you in his heart. He even bought this new SUV because he knew it was your favorite. If he had had your ID, he probably would have even transferred it to your name. She was about to turn around and leave, but she stopped. She stood up straight and looked at him. The solemn look she gave him made him a little nervous. She said, James, let me tell you something. My father indeed killed Mike's dad, and because of that, his mother fell ill, and he had a very difficult childhood. My family was responsible for that. I don't deny it. She looked down to the ground and continued. That year, he disguised himself as a bodyguard and came to my house, looking for evidence to avenge his parents. What he found caused the ruin of my family almost overnight. She looked back up and glared at him with tears in her eyes. She said, But my brother wasn't responsible for what happened. Why should he pay for all this? She lost control of her emotions, and tears started streaming down her face. Ava had been practically raised by her eldest brother, Aiden. Her father was an immoral man who didn't care much for his family, and she didn't think much of him. He had many other children from all the mistresses he had had over the years. In the past, Aiden had been an executive with a reputation comparable to Noah's. In fact, he had almost been as powerful as Alexander. But it pained Ava to know that he was lying on a hospital bed, unresponsive. Ava, what happened with your brother was an accident, James said. He wanted to explain, but the situation was very complicated. Only Aiden and Mike really know the whole truth. He wanted to defend Mike, but he didn't know what more to say. James, I don't hate Mike for causing our situation to be what it is today, she said. I only hate him for hurting my brother. She expected herself to start crying again, but was surprised to find that she had no more tears. She felt numb. She said, You know, I looked for Mike after the incident. I told myself that as long as he explained what happened, I would believe him. I was willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. But what ended up happening? I stood outside his family's villa, rejected. All I received was his mother's sarcasm. James was silent. He couldn't deny that what had happened in the past was harsh. In fact, he had once thought that it would destroy her. I really have nothing against you, James, she said quietly. But don't ever mention him in front of me again. Otherwise, I'll have a falling out with you too. After she had finished speaking, she opened the door to her apartment building. She turned back around to thank James for the ride. He didn't know how to respond. Ava, wait, he cried. He hesitated for a moment, and then he said, Mike doesn't want me to tell you this, but I think you should know. The person who sent you to the hospital when you fainted outside his family's villa that night wasn't me. It was him. She clenched her fists and tried to control her emotions. After a moment, she said, All right, then. I guess I won't be so nice to you next time. What? He asked, surprised. Did I just say something stupid? He thought. James had worked with Mike for two years and had been in love with Ava for half of it. Ava had been engaged to Mike at the age of 18, but the engagement had been called off. Despite their engagement, she had only been to the King family's villa once. That night, there had been a heavy thunderstorm. She had stood outside their villa, drenched from the pouring rain, waiting for Mike to come out and meet her. 
She had hoped that he would give her an explanation to save the relationship. She had an intense fear of lightning, but that night she had faced her greatest fear to stand out there in the storm. She had seen their housekeeper point at her through the window with a look of contempt. After being out there for a while, she had gotten sick and lost consciousness. She remembered falling to the ground and hearing the sound of rain around her. Later on, when she woke up in the hospital, her medical records stated that she had had a fever. James had been in the room beside her. He said that he had seen her as he was passing by and drove her to the hospital. The doctors and nurses had also told her it was James who had taken her in. Now he's telling me that it wasn't him, she thought. How can that be? She had found an amber cufflink on the hospital bed that she knew belonged to Mike. She had given it to him when he was 16 as a thank you gift for teaching her how to ride a horse. At the time, it wasn't important who had taken me to the hospital, she thought. What was important was Mike's attitude when she was there. Since he had decided to avoid me, he clearly showed that he didn't care. On the day she had woken up, she had received another piece of news. She found out that Aiden had been seriously injured during the confrontation with Mike and was in a coma. Ava hadn't stayed at Rock Hill Manor for very long, but her visit had significantly affected Samantha's mood. Not long after she had left, Alexander descended the stairs. Samantha looked at him with a neutral look on her face. After a while, she said, Thank you. She only said those two faint words. She was still upset with him and didn't want to speak to him. He helped her back to the master bedroom and brought her some new clothes to wear. Let's get you into a different set of clothes, he said, reaching for her top. I can get dressed myself, she said, blocking his hand. You have nothing I haven't seen before. What's there to be ashamed of? He asked. He didn't see what the problem was. I don't feel comfortable with you doing it, she replied. All right, you can do it yourself then, but come out when you're done, he said. Samantha changed her clothes, cursing him under her breath the whole time. He hadn't given her any shoes to put on, and he carried her straight from the master bedroom to the car. Where are you taking me? She asked, puzzled. She knew that it was too early for the engagement banquet. I thought you weren't talking to me, he said. He wasn't angry with her, but her silent treatment was starting to wear him down. Aside from thanking him earlier, she hadn't said much more to him over the previous two days. She turned her head away from him and looked out the window in a daze. The car stopped outside a Baroque-style villa. When they reached the house, Samantha wanted to walk in by herself. Then, she remembered that Alexander hadn't brought her any shoes. She had to either let him carry her or walk barefoot. Alexander's handsome face attracted the attention of many women as they entered the foyer, not least because he was carrying Samantha in his arms. A few women commented to each other about them. Wow, look over there. Who's that handsome man? What a lucky woman to be carried by her man. She must be so happy. Samantha didn't want to be seen, so she buried her face in his arms, breathing in the scent of his cologne. She thought, happy my ass. Are you jealous? You can have him. When they went up to the second floor, a man came to greet them. Welcome, he said. And who might this be? His voice was familiar to Samantha. He had a little bit of an accent. She turned her head and saw that it was the famous stylist, Alvin Russo. He was sporting a new hairstyle that was quite eccentric, but with his personality, he was able to pull it off. He owned one of the top design studios in Springfield. He didn't typically serve customers personally because he was the boss, and in his mind, they weren't worth his time. But that evening, he was doing a special favor for Alexander. Well, what will it be for this ravishing young lady? He asked in a dramatic voice. It is an honor to work with this beauty once again. Hello, Alvin, Samantha said, blushing. He was a very important figure in the fashion industry, and she had a lot of respect for him. Alexander suddenly felt very jealous. He wouldn't have dared to hand his wife over to him if it wasn't for the fact that he was sure he was into men. Alvin, this is my wife, 
he said. What did you say? Don't tell me this magnificent creature is your wife, he said. Alexander was growing irritated listening to the man shower his wife with compliments. Are you quite finished? Alexander asked, pausing with each word. Pardon me, Alvin said, giving Samantha a playful grin. As Alvin had received a request from Alexander earlier that morning to make a dress for someone, he had some prepared in advance to show them. His assistant brought out some beautiful gowns, and Alexander put Samantha down gently on the couch. She was allowed to choose whatever dress she wanted, but she couldn't decide. They were all too beautiful. Also, the dresses were all designed to be very revealing in the chest, and she wanted to keep that part covered. What else do you have? Alexander asked before Samantha could even open her mouth. After looking at three different batches, he was still not satisfied. They're all too revealing. I want the dress to cover more, he said. But she has a perfect bone structure, Alvin thought. Why on God's green earth would you want to hide that? It took a lot of willpower for Alvin not to criticize Alexander's taste. He took out the first gown that he had shown once more. This is the least revealing one. There's no more, he said with a disappointed tone in his voice. His assistant was also getting frustrated. While he was helping Samantha try on dresses, he had seen some marks on her body and understood why he wanted her to cover up. That man looks like a bully, he thought. I wonder if those marks are from him. Samantha was shy and didn't know that Alvin's assistant had thought such terrible things about Alexander. After changing into the gown, Samantha took the diamond wedding ring off of her neck and put it on the ring finger of her left hand. You really are stunning, the assistant said. And you have a gorgeous figure. Has anyone ever told you that you could be a model? She had been all over the world with Alvin and had been very busy all year. She hadn't had much time to pay attention to social media and had missed seeing the shows that she was in. Samantha was very satisfied with the dress. It wasn't too revealing and it showed off her figure nicely. Alexander sat on the couch and waited. He wasn't used to waiting for people and was getting impatient. Usually, others were waiting for him. The door of the fitting room opened and Samantha stepped out. Wow, it's absolutely perfect, Alvin said. He was the first to speak. I couldn't be more thrilled with how this looks on you. Alexander stood up and looked her up and down. The dress was long and white. It had an open collar that showed off her graceful neck and long sleeves that were embroidered with a delicate pattern. The waist was folded and the skirt flared out at the bottom. It had two layers of fabric and the top layer had a beautiful soft flow. With every step she took, it rippled like the swirling of smoke in the air. He thought that it was beautiful beyond compare. May I say that you're the only woman I've ever seen who could do this dress justice, Alvin exclaimed excitedly. Samantha smiled gratefully. She wasn't in the right spirit to enjoy his enthusiasm. But she really liked the dress. It was very similar to the one she had seen in a magazine. She tried for a moment to remember where she had seen it. And what does Sir think? Alvin asked Alexander with a hopeful look in his eyes. She needs makeup, he replied. Oh, but of course, he said with a forced smile. Alexander's cold response made him slightly aggravated. This man doesn't know how to appreciate beauty, he thought with a sigh. In fact, the moment she had stepped out in the dress, Alexander's heart had skipped a beat. He just didn't know how to express himself. He narrowed his eyes as he was thinking, how do I get her back to Rock Hill Manor looking so beautiful? We'll have to go there before going to the engagement party. Alvin led Samantha to another room. Without Alexander by his side, he was in a much better mood. He chatted with her lightheartedly as he did her makeup. Alvin enjoyed doing Samantha's makeup. Her skin was fair, her facial features were delicate, and her personality was gentle and charming. He didn't need to spend a lot of time fixing imperfections. After about an hour, they were done, and Alvin took her back to Alexander. He had changed into a dark checkered suit while they were gone. The diagonal tie matched Samantha's outfit perfectly. His hair was styled, and he looked more handsome than she had ever seen him before. 
Alvin asked her about her shoe size and took out a pair of silver high-heeled shoes. When Alexander saw him, he shook his head and told him to show only flats. So Alvin brought out a pair of white embroidered slippers that were very delicate and that matched her dress perfectly. Samantha breathed a sigh of relief. She was having trouble walking and didn't feel comfortable in high heels. When they were finished, Alexander helped Samantha back into the car. He was trying to be helpful and keep his temper in check. She sensed that he was feeling guilty about what had happened in the car. When they were about to arrive at the dock for the party, Alexander took out his silver mask to cover his handsome face. I can walk by myself, Samantha said when she noticed that he intended to carry her again. Does it still hurt? he asked. Her ears were red and she had a sullen face. She didn't want to discuss the matter any further. He helped her out of the car and with her hand in his arm, they walked to the dock. There were cars and people everywhere. Samantha recognized some famous actors and actresses, as well as other important people. Because of the status of Lily and Brady's families, there were a lot of celebrities in attendance, including people from the fashion and entertainment industry. There were also some important CEOs of real estate and investment companies. Alexander attracted the attention of many people. With his imposing demeanor, even in a place full of celebrities, he still stole the spotlight. It didn't help that he was wearing a mask. It aroused the curiosity of everyone who saw it. He ignored the looks that people were giving him. After handing over his invitation letter, he put his arm around Samantha and they boarded the ship. When they were going upstairs, she took a big step forward and twisted her ankle. She winced in pain. Without a word, Alexander made a gesture that he was going to carry her again, but she pushed him away with her hand against his chest. Alex, let me go, she cried out. Everyone around looked at them. She was embarrassed and hit his shoulder. He helped her onto the boat and said in a whisper, Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine, she said flatly. Forget about it. She wanted to slap him. She lowered her head and looked at the tip of her toes. Her only desire that evening was to take the spotlight away from Lily. Alexander thought that she looked enchanting, as though she had just stepped out of a painting. She was a striking contrast to the tall man wearing a mask who was standing by her side. The part of Alexander's face that was revealed looked frigid, but he looked at the woman next to him with a warmth that could melt ice. The image of the intriguing couple caught the eye of a silver-haired man that was standing on the upper deck. Sam, you're here, and you brought Alexander. Lily cried out when she saw them. She was wearing a champagne-colored gown and was holding Brady's hand as she walked over with a bright smile on her face. When she saw the masked man, her heart beat a little faster. It's no surprise that he's here, I guess, Lily thought. After all, he's Sam's husband and was my former fiancé. Brady's eyes lit up the moment he saw Samantha. They faded again when he noticed Alexander standing beside her. Alex, you're not well. Why are you here? Brady asked. He hadn't expected him to come and wasn't happy that he was there. He was speaking loudly to remind everyone that Alexander was sick and weak. He thought that Samantha would come by herself. He'd been looking forward to seeing her. He wanted to tell her that he loved her more than Alexander did and that he wanted to be with her even though she was married. You invited me, Alexander said without much enthusiasm. His casual tone didn't sound like he was happy to be there. Brady was surprised when Alexander didn't rise to the bait. Good to see you too, Brady, he added. Samantha looked at her husband in amazement. They all knew Alexander had a short temper and had expected him to respond in anger. As Samantha looked around the deck, she wondered if they had forgotten how charismatic her husband could be. They were acting as if the powerful man standing in front of them was a stranger, and his ability to function in public surprised them all. The guests were there to honor Brady and Lily, but their attention was firmly focused on the couple who had just arrived. Hey, isn't that Sam? A woman in a sparkly red dress asked. I recognized her from the Road to the Top competition. Oh my God, is she wearing one of Alvin Russo's dresses? Her friend asked, covering her mouth in shock. 
I think she is, the woman in red replied. I heard someone offered him a fortune for that dress, but Alvin refused to sell it. He didn't want someone to just wear it. He was waiting for the right woman to come along who would accentuate every last detail. Looks like you found her. Samantha had heard every word and was speechless. She knew the dress was designer, but she hadn't realized it was one of Alvin's own designs. She looked at Alexander for confirmation, but he simply shrugged his shoulders as if it were perfectly natural for her to wear such an expensive dress. She wondered if Alvin's surprise appearance at the car show wasn't so much of a coincidence as a request from Alexander. The thought made her feel deflated. The guests continued to admire her dress, and those who recognized her speculated about who her new husband could be. It can't be Alex, surely, one of the female guests whispered. Don't be ridiculous, her husband answered. It's all for show. He's obviously just a patron for the competition. Sam, darling, Lily cooed. Why do you look so unhappy? Aren't you thrilled to be attending your older sister's engagement party? Samantha knew her sister well enough to recognize her words were laced with contempt and that she would be fuming that her appearance with Alexander had stolen her limelight. Of course, she replied. Mom and Dad are chatting with Brady's parents right now, but you should find time to go and see them. Samantha and Lily are sisters, the woman in the red dress exclaimed. Yes, Sam and I share a father only, but I still consider her my younger sister, Lily replied. Samantha plastered a smile on her face at the same time as Lily's eyes filled with fake pride. There had been no point in her life where Lily had treated her with sibling affection, and they both knew it. Luckily, she takes most of her traits from the Miller side. Lily said as she stroked a strand of stray hair away from Samantha's face. It took everything Samantha had to stop herself from retaliating. She could never understand why Lily took so much pleasure in patronizing her, especially in public. Brady frowned at Lily, but he knew better than to stick up for Samantha in front of his new fiance. She's made a fool of me too many times, he thought. It's no longer my place to stand up for her. Alexander had listened to Lily's mocking undertone long enough. Your sister won't succumb to your incessant baiting, Lily, he said cheerfully as he put his arm around Samantha's shoulders. Quite simply put, you're not worth it. The guests had struggled to see Alexander's expression under his silver mask, so the pleasant tone that came with his callous words had shocked them. Alex, are you and Sam together? A man nearby asked. Sam is my wife, Alexander said. It's all my fault for being too... Alex, be quiet, Samantha said, turning to him. She couldn't believe he was sharing the details of their relationship in such a public setting. If he continued to talk, she was sure it would ruin everything. Alexander was furious that she had spoken to him in such a manner, but his rage had been softened by hers. He tried his best not to laugh as she glared at him. He had never seen her so angry, but rather than look intimidating, he thought she looked adorable. He knew telling her that would only enrage her further, so he held back. Instead, he reached up and pinched her cheek affectionately, which only served to anger her more. Samantha could feel her ears burning as the announcement spread amongst the guests, and they began to mutter amongst themselves. I can't believe he married beneath himself, an elderly woman in a large floppy hat said. Maybe that's why he kept it a secret, said her younger companion. Samantha closed her eyes and prayed for the strength she needed to get through the rest of the party. She had been brought up not to make a scene, and she decided that leaving early would make her appear childish and ill-mannered. Not only were people talking about her behind her back, but she knew the announcement would have irritated her sister, and Lily didn't need any further motivation to torment her. Whether or not her husband had meant to, he had only made matters worse. Damn him, she thought. Her mind whirled as she tried to grasp how to handle the situation. She noticed that guests who had initially given her a wide berth were moving closer. Go with it, Alexander whispered. This is how it works here. Now that they know you're my wife, they'll show you the respect you deserve. 
Samantha's fears were alleviated somewhat by his words. She didn't care whether any of the guests looked down on her. She was more concerned with news spreading that she was married to such a powerful man. This is a private function, she reminded herself. Idle gossip from guests would be frowned upon. She realized that Alexander hadn't said the words to spite her. He had risked his own reputation to save hers. She hated the way he blew hot and cold. She had no idea where she stood with him from one day to the next. One minute she felt like she hated him, the next he was working his way into her heart. Mrs. Brown, may I say congratulations? It's lovely to meet you, said the woman in the red dress. Oh, wow, your wedding ring is beautiful, her friend said, gasping as she reached for Samantha's hand. Samantha continued to smile and make idle conversation with the guests who were brave enough to approach her while Alexander was standing by her side. She guessed that most of them were either secretly jealous or thought her unworthy of such a respected man, but they were courteous and polite. Lily and Brady stood to the side, silently seething that they had become the secondary characters at their own party. In her heart, Lily felt that she should be the new Mrs. Brown and not her sister. She knew she would have been if things had turned out differently. Brady tried his best not to show how mesmerized he was by Samantha's appearance. He thought she was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. Sam should be my wife, not his, he thought. Alexander jutted his chin toward him and said, Brady, aren't you going to officially welcome your new aunt? Brady locked his jaw and glowered at him. Sorry, what was that? Alexander asked, tilting his head. I didn't hear you. Brady realized that if he didn't do as Alexander asked, his uncle would find a way to make him look like a fool again. Congratulations, Sam. Welcome to the family. Brady said through gritted teeth. Hello, aunt, Lily said, giggling. With Alexander by her side, Samantha allowed herself to relax and enjoy herself a little. Thank you, Brady, she said, smiling. That's very kind of you. Alexander looked down at her. For the first time in weeks, he could see she was genuinely happy. His eyes lit up watching her, and he smiled. Then he turned to look at Lily and said, You're not a Jackson yet, so I think you can drop the aunt for now. Lily felt humiliated, but she pursed her lips and didn't respond. She looked at Brady and found that his expression was like thunder. The sun was setting as the cruise ship left the harbor. The guests had begun to circulate and were enjoying canapés provided by the top-class chef Lily had hired. Samantha had seen posts she had uploaded bragging about it on her social media platforms in the days leading up to the celebration. She leaned against the railings and gazed up at the starry night sky. She sighed as the cool sea breeze blowing toward her made her feel at ease. Alexander had been called inside by Simon for a family chat. From where she was standing, she could see Loreen, Albert, Brady, and the others. Samantha knew they were discussing the prospect of Lily joining the family and that her father and stepmother were there too. She wasn't in any rush to talk to her father and was under no illusion that he would want to see her either. The Brown family also had strained family dynamics, and Samantha was surprised Alexander was willing to talk to Lorene. It was even more surprising to her that Lorene had the strength to stand beside Alexander after he had nearly crippled her. Samantha's attention was drawn away from the family gathering when she heard a group of female guests gossiping nearby. From the tone of their voices, she could tell they were not being complimentary about their target. It's amazing what lengths some women will go to in order to marry into a wealthy family. I'm not sure I could marry someone disfigured for money, one of the women said in disgust. Some people in this world have no shame and are willing to give up their dignity if it serves a purpose, another woman responded. She only married him because my brother didn't want her. She doesn't care what toes she tramples on to get what she wants. Samantha recognized the last voice instantly to be Brady's sister, Mia. Oh, sorry, Sam. I didn't see you there, Mia said, pouting dramatically. The women around her started to laugh. 
Samantha wasn't insecure enough to be affected by their disparaging remarks. She knew they simply believed whatever version of events Mia had told them. She also knew Mia still held a grudge against her after her relationship with Brady. Her position as Alexander's wife propelled her much further up the social ladder, which she could only presume had made her jealous. Samantha stared through the glass at her husband, who was still deep in conversation, and she noted his broad, solid back and shoulders. She knew the women were just trying to get under her skin. Even from behind, it was obvious to her how attractive he was, regardless of what they thought was under the mask. Samantha turned back to the group of women and gave them a smile they weren't prepared for. She felt slightly relieved when they each had the decency to look contrite. What do you think about my brother and Lily's engagement, Sam? You must be so envious. You didn't have one, did you? Mia asked with a sneer. In fact, you didn't have much of a wedding either, from what I've heard. That explains why no one in our circle had heard that Alex had gotten married, said one of the women as she flicked back her long platinum blonde hair. He obviously doesn't think much of her. There must be a reason he went through with it, Mia said, frowning. When I get married, it'll be for love, not like some people who marry for money and status. Samantha remembered their last confrontation and wished she could slap her face again, but she refused to make a show of herself in front of so many people. She took a sip of champagne and tried to ignore Mia. The pink diamond wedding ring sparkled in the moonlight, making the women stare in admiration. Mia was sure that Samantha had flashed it on purpose to goad her. She was so angry she couldn't hold back her next words. She walked up to her and whispered, Do you want to know how Aubrey died? Samantha's calm and collected expression changed in an instant. What do you know? she asked, glaring at Mia. Mia smiled smugly and replied, You're going to have to beg me for answers, Sam, but I'll tell you who Aubrey's boyfriend was. According to my sources, she was even pregnant at the time. Pregnant? Samantha murmured. When Mia refused to elaborate, Samantha lost her patience, pushed her against the railings, and pinned her there. Start talking, Mia, she ordered. Mia cried out in shock. She knew her words would antagonize Samantha, but she hadn't expected such an intense reaction. Sam, what are you doing? Let go of Mia! One of the women shouted. Samantha had no intention of letting her go until she found out exactly what she knew about Aubrey. When Thomas found out his health was failing, Samantha's family had been thrown into disarray. Aubrey had approached her boyfriend for a loan for money to help pay for the medical expenses. No one had known much about him, but Samantha and Ava had suspected he had a wealthy background. She never returned. Samantha and Ava later discovered Aubrey's diary. It revealed that she and her boyfriend were not the loved-up couples everyone had thought them to be. And they had already split up by the time she asked him for financial assistance. Samantha had never forgiven herself for her disappearance. Help! Mia shouted. Sam has gone crazy. She's going to kill me. When Samantha made no effort to release her, she increased her venomous rant. You're only doing this because you're jealous of my brother and Lily. He's in love with her, not you. Samantha had no intention of hurting Mia. She had only meant to scare her into telling the truth about Aubrey. She doubted anyone would believe that she still had feelings for Brady when she was married to a man like Alexander. Still, the scene they were creating in front of everyone was embarrassing for both of them. Mia! Samantha yelled. Mia's friends looked around for help, but no one seemed to be paying attention. Sam, stop this! They begged. Someone call security! Mia demanded loudly enough to finally draw the attention of the other guests. Sam has lost her mind! She's going to kill Mia! One of them called out. Samantha knew she didn't have a lot of time. She turned back to Mia and pushed her finger into her chest. Mia, if you don't tell me everything, I'll push you overboard. I swear it. Aubrey's disappearance was a wound that had never healed. Samantha didn't care what other people thought of her as long as she finally learned the truth. 
She had suffered beyond belief with guilt. And with the loss of their family wealth came the inability to pay the right people to find out what had happened to Aubrey. Samantha would do anything to find answers, and Mia's words were the first breakthrough in years. She's threatening to drown me. Will someone please help? Mia begged through her fake tears. Mia grinned back at Samantha's shocked expression. She knew there was no way the new Mrs. Brown would push her over the side. But if she was going to be humiliated, she decided she would put on a good show. Mia! Lily shouted as she rushed over. She smiled when she realized she could use the situation to her advantage. Sam, let go of her! This is stupid! she said. Lily moved closer to them, blocking their view from the spectators, and hooked her foot behind Samantha's ankle. The move caused her to lose her balance. As she began to fall, Lily shoved her with her hip, sending her over the railings and into the water. Lily screamed. Someone help! Sam has fallen into the ocean! As word spread throughout the deck, the guests began to panic. Samantha could hear shouting coming from the ship. She did her best to tread water as the salty liquid continued to hit her face, making it difficult to breathe. Mia's final words before she pushed her rang in her ears. You should know Aubrey's boyfriend was my uncle. Alex? She wondered. Samantha had been so taken aback by the revelation that she hadn't realized what her sister was going to do until it was too late. She doubted the other guests had noticed what Lily had done either. The impact of the waves on her already aching body made it hard to keep fighting. She knew that if she wasn't rescued soon, she was going to die. Her thoughts drifted back to Aubrey and her similar plight as her lungs burned for oxygen. Was she really carrying a baby when she died? She wondered. Sam was threatening to hurl Mia in the water when she fell overboard, so it's her own fault. I don't see why someone should risk their life to save her, one of the male guests said. You're absolutely right. It's far too dangerous. If Sam dies, then so be... Before the woman could finish speaking, a man dashed onto the railings and jumped into the water. When Alexander and the others had stepped outside, they noticed the commotion by the railings. He immediately felt his stomach dip and rushed over to see what had happened. Is Sam dead? The woman in red asked. As soon as he heard the words, he tore off his jacket and shoes and jumped into the ocean. Alex! Mia called out. The guests couldn't believe that the two men had risked their lives to try to save Samantha. The chatter grew louder as they tried to comprehend who the first man was and why Alexander felt the need to personally jump in after her. After all, they were on a cruise ship. It wasn't a long way down, and there were lifeguards on board. Sam! Brady roared as he broke out of stunned silence. As soon as he saw her going into the water, he wanted to jump in. Brady, what are you doing? Lily shouted as she pulled him back with a look of terror etched on her face. I'm going in, he told her. Her husband has gone in, Lily replied. I know that, but under the circumstances, I don't think it will raise eyebrows, do you? He snapped. Brady heard his mother call out his name and turned to face her. Your place is with Lily, Lorene said, scowling. What does it matter to you if Sam dies? Behind her were Samantha's father and stepmother. Lorraine awkwardly looked at them before softening her words. Brady, you are the Jackson heir and are about to be married. What if something happens to you? Think about what that would do to Lily, to your family. May had been struggling to suppress her anger at Samantha. Stupid woman, she thought. I hope she dies. Alex has already gone in, and the lifeguards are preparing the boats, Chris said. Let the professionals do their job. Lily seized her opportunity while they were all together to twist the knife. Sam fell while trying to push Mia into the water, she explained, feigning shock that such a thing could have happened. Mia had been so horrified by what she had witnessed that she was still frozen to the spot. She tried to gather her chaotic thoughts as she replayed the scene in her mind. Did Sam fall, or did I accidentally push her? She wondered. She looked toward the huddle when she heard her mother's voice. 
Sam actually wanted to harm my daughter. Tell the rescue team not to go down, Lorraine shouted angrily. Mom, Brady said, frowning. I'm sorry, but that's how I feel, she said, looking at Chris and May. Of course, it's up to you. She's your daughter. No, no objections here, Chris said, nodding towards Lorraine. However, if Sam does survive, I will make sure she apologizes to Mia. Brady wanted to object, but he knew his mother had more authority. He could only stand and watch as Lorraine called the lifeguards over. Other than Alex and Sam, who else is in the water? She asked. When no one seemed to know, the rescue team looked towards Simon. Those who jumped must be good swimmers, Simon replied. Let's check their progress before needlessly sending the lifeguards into the water. Simon was perfectly happy to allow his son to die at sea, and he had no sympathy for the other people in the water either. No one asked them to jump in, Simon reasoned. Lily looked over the railing and down into the dark, murky water. She was disappointed when she couldn't see any of them. She wanted proof that her sister was gone once and for all. Albert pushed his glasses up the bridge of his nose into his eyes to hide his anticipation. He also wanted to witness his sibling sinking into the abyss. With Alexander gone, no one would contest him for the family property. He wished he had instigated the situation himself. He remembered the last time he had planned his demise. He had arranged for a poisonous snake to attack them, but his brother had killed the snake. The guests were both horrified and intrigued. They could tell that neither the Brown, Jackson, nor the Miller family were in any rush to help. It seemed to them that the rich and powerful really did live by their own set of rules. Even with an audience, they seemed impervious to the consequences of actively letting them die. Samantha's mind was in chaos, and she began to sink into the darkness. Just as she was about to lose consciousness, she felt hands at her waist and realized she was being dragged back up towards the bright lights of the ship. She coughed and sputtered for air as soon as she broke the surface, and she instinctively clung to her savior as he hauled her back towards the ship. You saved me, she exclaimed as they reached the ship's ladder. When the guests noticed two heads bopping up from the water, Simon was forced to send the rescue team to assist them. Samantha continued to cough as she struggled to expel the salty water and seaweed from her lungs. It made her want to vomit. A hand patted her back, and she gave one final cough. Is that better? The familiar voice asked. Samantha opened her eyes and focused on the man's handsome face. Recognition slammed into her, and she realized why she had felt so awkward in his arms. It was David holding her, not Alexander. Samantha was shocked when she noticed another figure emerging from the dark water. She gasped as he swam into the light emitting from the cruise ship, and she spotted a silver mask. Alex! She cried out as she focused on his mask. Two lifeboats appeared one behind Alexander and another close to Samantha and David. Her husband ignored the rescue team and continued to swim toward her. Thank you for saving my wife. He choked out when he made it to them. As David nodded his acknowledgement, the rescue team started to pull them from the water. Alexander pulled away. He didn't need anyone to help him and easily pulled himself onto the lifeboat. He turned around and reached for Samantha. But... David held her tight when she tried to free herself from his embrace. Alexander frowned as David hauled himself and Samantha onto the lifeboat. Thank you, Samantha said sincerely as she tried to pull her hand from his. Still, he wouldn't release her. Alexander narrowed his eyes. Samantha could feel the atmosphere on the lifeboat become tense as the two powerful men stared each other down. The three lifeguards looked at each other, but decided not to intervene. Let her go, Alexander ordered through gritted teeth. Samantha watched as the gentleness, which had been in David's eyes only moments before, was replaced with arrogance and contempt. I risked my life to save your wife. Is this how you show your appreciation? David asked. 
Samantha began to cough again, ejecting more water from her lungs. It shot out and struck both men, but neither seemed to care as they continued to stare at each other. I've already thanked you, Alexander snarled. He was still livid, but he couldn't ignore the fact that the silver-haired man had saved Samantha, and he owed him a debt of gratitude. He knew it would haunt him forever that he was not the one to rescue his wife. He had never been more terrified in his life, and the relief he felt after seeing Samantha safe was the only reason he had stopped himself from lunging at David. What do you want? Alexander asked. He guessed he would want a large sum of money and some form of recognition for his heroism. David's gaze traveled over Samantha's face. Then he turned back to Alexander and said, I want your wife. Are you going to give her to me? The tension that had been slowly dissipating returned in an instant. Samantha's face grew paler. She could almost feel the rage emanating from her husband from the other side of the small boat. The hand at her waist tightened, and she decided it was best to stay where she was. Do you want to die? Alexander asked menacingly. This is no time for jokes. Samantha didn't like the way David was acting. She couldn't deny there was a connection between them, but she knew in her heart if he continued to act the way he was, there would be no room for friendship. I really appreciate what you did for me, but can you please let go? She asked. She was exhausted. David could see it on her face and hear it in her words. He knew he had no choice but to let her go. As soon as he did, he lowered his eyes to hide his disappointment. The lifeboat docked, and the three of them began climbing the steel ladder back onto the ship. Alexander took most of his wife's weight until they reached the deck, where he scooped her up in his arms. David's blood stirred as he took in Samantha's body under the water-soaked dress. If only I had been a month earlier, he thought. There's no way she would have become Alex's wife. It seemed to David that the gods were always teasing him. Alex, he called out. Your wife fell into the ocean. Aren't you going to protect her modesty? My wife has nothing to do with you. Keep your eyes off of her, Alexander retorted. It was the first time he had met David face to face, but he knew instinctively that he was someone to keep an eye on. David tilted his head and said, Sam is indebted to me. If you don't protect her, then I will. Samantha peered over her husband's shoulder to look at him and found he was watching her with kind and gentle eyes. Just as Alexander was about to reply, a man appeared with towels and fresh clothes for David. He seemed to be some sort of employee and was showing him the greatest respect. Alexander watched from the corner of his eye but didn't say anything. When David approached and placed his fresh suit jacket over Samantha, he gave him a murderous glare. How dare he, he thought. If she's going to wear a man's jacket, it will be mine. Do you want everyone to see your wife's body? David asked. When Samantha realized what he meant, she was mortified and curled into Alexander's arms to hide her exposed body. David, please stop looking at me, Samantha said softly. I won't look at you, he replied, although he couldn't hide the adoration in his eyes. He found her innocence charming. The jacket is new. I haven't worn it before, he added, hoping to ease some of the mounting tension for her sake. Alexander had no choice but to wrap the jacket tightly around Samantha's shoulders. He didn't want others to see her body, but inside he was cursing David. He needed to stay away from his wife. It was evident to him that he had ulterior motives. The way he saw it, Samantha was his, and he wanted to destroy any man who tried to take her away from him. I only left her alone for half an hour, he thought. I can't believe she managed to get herself into so much trouble in that time. David locked his jaw as he watched them. If Alexander had not jumped into the ocean to save Samantha, he would not have hesitated to take her from him. If he didn't look after her properly, he had every intention of being the one to do so. Brady's eyes lit up in relief as the couple walked back onto the main deck, but he was the only one who seemed relieved that the couple had survived. Simon couldn't believe his eyes. Why won't he die? He thought. Brady was the first to approach them. Sam, are you all right? He asked, his expression full of concern. 
Lorraine had no interest in checking to see if she was okay. In her mind, Samantha had seduced her son and humiliated him by walking away, only to marry his disfigured uncle later. Mia, who had been watching in horror, breathed a sigh of relief. She thought she had accidentally pushed her into the water and killed her. She didn't care much for Samantha after what she had done to Brady, but she didn't want to be responsible for her death. When Lily saw Samantha return to the deck wrapped in Alexander's arms, she had been overcome with jealousy. To avoid raising suspicion, she had been forced to approach and offer false concern for her sister's well-being. Sam, what happened to you? Lily said, sighing. You had everyone out of their minds with worry, even Brady. Lily had chosen her words carefully to prevent rumors among the guests that his concern had been more than just worrying about his aunt. Brady, Lorraine scolded, calling him back. Chris knew Lorraine was still angry over what had happened between Samantha and Mia. He wanted to let her and the rest of the guests know that he did not condone his daughter's behavior. He strode up to Samantha and said, Sam, your actions towards Mia today were despicable. You must apologize to her and the rest of the Jackson family. Samantha shook her head in despair. Her hair was still dripping and she felt exhausted. She didn't want to talk to anyone except Alexander. She wanted to ask him about Aubrey, but she wasn't sure where to begin. Mr. Miller, Sam tried to strangle me just now and threatened to push me into the ocean, Mia said. Safe in the knowledge that Samantha was going to be okay, she wanted to keep up appearances, especially after witnessing her brother's display of concern. Simon stepped forward. He was determined not to squander his opportunity to capitalize on the situation. Alex, Chris is right. You and your wife need to apologize to Mia and her family. If she can't control her temper or act responsibly in public, she'll never be able to represent this family. I suggest you arrange for Leonard's shares to be transferred to Lorraine. It makes sense to do it before her behavior damages our reputation further. The surrounding guests watched on in silent fascination as the family argument continued. It was evident to all that Simon favored Lorraine over Alexander. I don't care about the shares, Alexander said as he pulled Samantha close. His words were a shock to all who heard them. Everyone knew how important it was to be a shareholder. Lorraine's eyes flashed with excitement. It was all she had ever wanted. If she could get her hands on the shares, she'd be able to attend the shareholder meetings and have a say in how the family business was run. She was aware Leonard had yet to hand over the shares that belonged to him and that a rift had developed between the brothers because of a woman. Alexander's next words hit her like a bucket of cold water. Mia, he said, turning to her. You have one minute to apologize to my wife. I suggest you do it right now. Lorraine was outraged. Alex, how dare you? You want my daughter to apologize when it was your wife who threatened her? She said in disbelief. Over my dead body is Mia apologizing, she thought. Mia had been afraid of Alexander since childhood. Her body trembled as she looked at her mother for help. You've 40 seconds left, Alexander said, looking at his watch. Alexander, Lorraine protested. 30 seconds, he continued. Everyone was silent as they watched the feuding families. Alexander was tall and imposing. He looked like some kind of deity as he stood there in his silver mask, commanding the attention of those around him. The guests were left wondering if his family really had been responsible for his disappearance from the public eye. The more they watched, the more unlikely it seemed. They appeared to have little power over him. They thought he looked untouchable and frightening, contrasting with how gently he held his wife in his arms. It was plain for everyone to see that Samantha did mean something to Alexander. Mia knew she was going to have to say something, and fast. Alexander hadn't thought twice about shooting his sister in the leg when she disrespected his mother. She was the one who attacked me first, Mia yelled, hoping her voice didn't betray her nerves. Sam threatened to kill me. Everyone saw it. Alexander didn't look interested in her version of events. Lily knew she needed to distance herself from the situation. 
Alex, Mia didn't mean to push Sam into the water. She was trying to defend herself. Ultimately, it's Sam's fault for creating the situation in the first place, she said. Mia was pleased to see her future sister-in-law was sticking up for her. She hooked her arm over Lily's and said, It's true. It was an accident. Alexander turned cold eyes on Lily and asked, What gives you the right to interfere with family matters? Lily's face turned pale. She's my sister, and I'm engaged to your nephew. I'll be a member of your family soon enough, she said, trying to stand her ground. Well, you're not married yet, Alexander sneered. Even then, you'll show your aunt some respect. Some of the guests snickered. Alex, be reasonable, Simon exclaimed, his face red with anger. I am being reasonable, Alexander replied, unfazed. He didn't care about the specifics. He just didn't want anyone to bully his wife. He turned a deadly glare on Mia and said, Time's up. He gently placed Samantha down on her feet, turned to grab a hold of Mia, and lifted her up as if he was going to throw her into the ocean. Alexander, wait! Samantha yelled, but her husband wasn't listening. Ah, I'm sorry! Mia cried out in fear. Please, please don't let go! Alexander placed her back on her feet, but her legs immediately gave way, and she fell onto the floor. He turned back to Samantha, who walked freely into his arms. I'm sorry, Sam, Mia said as tears flowed freely from her eyes and down her face. I didn't mean to push you over the railing. It was an accident. I didn't do it on purpose. She didn't want to die, and she had no idea if anyone would dive into the water to save her the way they had for Samantha. Everyone thought Mia looked pathetic as she continued to sob on her knees for forgiveness. Lorraine's heart ached for her daughter, but she was also becoming embarrassed as she continued to make a show of herself. She reached down to help her up, but Mia waved her away as she continued apologizing. Mia knew Alexander would find a way to punish her somehow. She didn't want to be shot like her mother. As far as she was concerned, Alexander was the devil. It wasn't you, Mia, Samantha said gently. Don't you realize, from the position you were in, you wouldn't have been able to push me. Samantha's words were like a clap of thunder. Everyone was shocked. They knew if it wasn't Mia, it must have been Lily. She was the only one who had been with Mia at the time. Everyone looked at Lily in disbelief. Lily? Lorraine asked. She was disappointed that she had fallen for her new daughter-in-law's act and began to like her. It wasn't me, Lily exclaimed. She froze for a moment before saying in an innocent voice, I treat Mia like my own sister. How could I possibly do that to her? Ha, <laughs> Sam's your sister and look how you treat her. Alexander snorted. Samantha looked at him. He had a lot more to say than usual, and she knew he had a talent for being disparaging. Lily was crumbling and looked to her mother for help. Sam, stop causing problems, May said quickly. Our family has fed you and clothed you. Lily has taken care of you since she was young, and I've always been kind to you. How can you be so vicious? You're trying to sabotage your sister with her new family. Even while she chastised Samantha, she suspected that Lily really had pushed her into the sea. She knew her daughter well. Samantha didn't believe May either. She knew there was one thing Lily liked about her, and it was the same thing she wanted to steal from her. Alexander. Both sides had convincing arguments, but only Samantha, Mia, and Lily knew the truth. Mia, what really happened? Brady asked, eager to clear up the situation. His beloved sister, the fiancé he was soon to marry, and Samantha, whom Mia had never liked, had gotten themselves mixed up in a mess. He was getting a headache thinking about it. You believe me, right, Mia? Lily implored. I loved you since you were young. I was protecting you. She held Mia's hand and looked lovingly into her eyes. She considered Mia to be a bit slow, and she was confident that she would win her over. Just as Lily knew she would, Mia blurted out, Sam, you're trying to cause problems for Lily with our family. You're jealous because she's marrying Brady. Well, forget it. I don't believe you. 
Samantha realized the hopelessness of convincing her, whom she also thought was a bit dim-witted. You're married to Alexander. Stop trying to get what isn't yours anymore. Chris chimed in, sensing Simon's displeasure at the situation. He knew the Brown family was partial to Lorraine and didn't think highly of Samantha. The other guests had been listening in and had decided that Samantha was still in love with Brady, but had married Alexander instead. They believed she was just trying to cause trouble for the new couple at their wedding. You need to be a wife to Alexander and stop causing problems, one guest said. Another spoke up, saying, Alex may not have a pretty face anymore, but he's your husband. How can you still be thinking about Brady? Yeah, another said to Alexander. She's no good. The other guests fell in line with the agreed-upon consensus, trying to please Simon and the rest of the Browns. Some of the guests said some very unkind things, making it sound as though Samantha had cheated on Alexander. Samantha looked at Alexander again and saw that he did not react to their comments. He seemed mockingly unaffected by them, as though they were clowns there trying to amuse him. When he wore his mask, he was the Brown family's Alex. Their friends had little respect for him. But when he took off his mask and became John Hunter, the same powerful people fawned all over him, praising him for his achievements. He thought about the time when he would remove the mask and end the game. He laughed to himself, picturing what their reactions would look like. He felt Samantha shift in his arms. As he looked down at her, she raised her tender lips to his and kissed him. The guests saw the gesture, and they saw his eyes surge with emotion. He hadn't expected her to kiss him. He had thought she was still angry at him. She whispered in his ear, Thank you for defending me. She turned to the crowd of guests and said, I don't know why Lily thinks I would let Alexander go for Brady. You can ask anyone at my school about my relationship with Brady and what he's like, and they will tell you the truth. But besides that, if I married Brady, I would be a Jackson and not a Brown anymore. She spoke in a soft, calm voice, and her measured pace was very persuasive. She spoke to them with confidence, as though she were only stating facts and didn't care whether they believed her or not. Her attitude convinced the skeptical wealthy guests. They knew she was right to value becoming a member of the prestigious Brown family over the prospect of being a Jackson. Even if the Browns didn't think much of her, they were always the wealthy and influential Mitchells from his mother's side. The guests knew that it made no sense for Samantha to steal Brady away. They suddenly realized that the idea of her cheating on Alexander with Brady was a farce. And they reasoned that even if she wanted to steal him, she could have come up with a better plan than falling into the sea. She felt proud of the way she had spoken up for herself, but something was still bothering her. She wanted answers for Aubrey. She looked to Alexander and was about to ask him a question when he looked at Lily and said, Apologize to your sister. What do I need to apologize for? Lily asked, smiling at her former fiancé. You pushed my wife into the water. You told lies about her. You created problems between us, he said, listing her misdeeds. Pick a reason. The more he interacted with her, the more Alexander thought Lily was vicious and sneaky. He didn't need the details to know that Samantha had been badly bullied by her when they were growing up. How can you believe Sam over me? Lily asked, looking nervous. She felt as though ants were crawling all over her skin. You haven't known her very long. How much do you even know about her? He smirked and said, Shut up, Lily. May, seeing that the situation was turning sour, pulled her daughter aside. Even though she didn't know very much about the dynamics between the Brown family and Alexander, May knew that Alexander was someone that even Simon didn't want to offend. And after you apologize, be quiet, Alexander said to Lily. Samantha could see Alexander's strong features becoming animated. He had always been quiet in public, but that day, all the words he spoke were on her behalf. Samantha looked down, trying not to get emotional. I'm sorry, Sam, Lily said begrudgingly. I must have misunderstood you. Her fists were clenched so tightly that her nails dug into her palms. Chris interjected. 
Sam, if you two have a problem with each other, let's talk about it at home. He was hinting at how the sisters didn't get along privately, and Samantha could see how he was taking advantage of the situation to embarrass her. She said casually, Don't worry about apologizing. I'm used to it. The Miller's faces turned pale. May quickly pulled Chris to the side to stop him from saying anything mean to Samantha in front of everyone. Alexander stood still, waiting for Lily's response. Lily felt like a fool with everyone watching her. Her face burned red. Even Brady didn't help her. It appeared that he wasn't on her side at all. Alexander had embarrassed her in front of everyone. She didn't hate him for it, but rather, she hated Samantha. She remembered when his love and protection had been reserved for her. She still believed that his insults and humiliations should be directed at other women, specifically at Samantha. Mia apologized to Sam, Lorraine said to Alexander. Shouldn't Sam apologize to my daughter now? She was eager to settle the score for Mia. The Millers and the Jacksons felt guilty. They knew that Brady had pursued Samantha for a long time with ulterior motives and then cheated on her with Lily. Samantha had been forced to take Lily's place as Alexander's wife. They also knew if the facts were revealed, the reputations that would suffer would be Brady and Lily's. She doesn't need to apologize, Alexander answered arrogantly. I tell you what, Mia, I apologize to my wife. Are we good? No, we're not good, Mia shouted, shaking her head. She didn't like Alexander any more than she had when they were young. Lorraine pinched her daughter to make her stop talking. New details were spreading throughout Springfield's social circle. It was becoming known that Samantha had been treated harshly by the Millers, but was deeply loved by Alexander. Her relationship with Alexander had raised her status higher than Lily's. They knew that the two daughters of the Miller family had complex relationships with both Alexander and Brady. Brady's relationship with Samantha was still not well understood, but it was clear to them that Samantha no longer loved Brady. Alexander had also become more interesting to them. He seemed strong and not sick at all. He had jumped into the sea and appeared more robust than they had expected. I want to ask you something, Samantha said to Alexander. She spoke quietly, but he could hear her as he held her close. Samantha looked at him with a serious expression and asked, Do you know a woman named Aubrey Baker? Alexander stopped walking and looked down at her with surprise. Samantha was finding it difficult to speak. Were you her boyfriend, or were you in some kind of relationship with her? Alexander frowned, wondering where her question had come from. Who told you that? He asked. She was painfully afraid that she had married her best friend's lover. She closed her eyes, struggling with the idea that Aubrey had lost her life for her. Were you her boyfriend, you jerk? She burst out, unable to stop herself. Alexander was flabbergasted. He knew he was desired by other women, yet he had jumped into the sea to save her. He was incredulous that after his display, she would believe a rumor from someone she hardly knew. He pinched the space between his eyebrows in frustration. If it had been anyone else speaking to him in such a manner, he would have them thrown back into the sea. Could you repeat that? He asked, trying to hold back his anger. He knew he had a bad temper, and he had been trying to stay calm to be more inviting to her. His stomach hurt when she made him mad. Answer the question, Samantha demanded, glaring at him. Did you know she might have been pregnant? How could you do it? Your girlfriend and your child fell into the sea and died, and you're pretending it never happened. Where's your humanity? He found it funny she used the word humanity. He knew that humanity was scarce amongst the wealthy. Who told you that Aubrey was my girlfriend? He replied. She was Leonard's girlfriend. What's wrong with you? Samantha was dumbfounded. She remembered Mia had said that her uncle was Aubrey's boyfriend. She had thought Mia meant Alexander. She completely forgot about his younger brother, Leonard. How do you know her? He asked, beginning to calm down. She was my best friend, she answered, looking at the floor to hide her grief.
The cruise ship was like a high-class club in motion. Apart from its private suites, it offered karaoke, a chess room, a gym, and endless other amenities. Samantha took a bath in the primary bathroom, while Alexander showered in the other. By the time she had finished her bath, he had been waiting for nearly an hour. Her head was spinning with thoughts of Aubrey and Leonard. She had never met Leonard. She remembered that Aubrey had expressed feelings of helplessness and pain about her relationship on more than one occasion, and she wondered what their relationship had been like. She recollected that Brenda had told her that Leonard and Alexander had fallen out over a woman. She was Leonard's lover, and she had died in the sea. Samantha wondered what role, if any, Alexander had played in the matter. She wondered why Leonard had cut ties with the brother he had been so close to. She reasoned that no one knew the details of the relationship other than the people involved in it. She lay in the tub thinking about what she knew. Then, she realized she didn't have any clothes to change into. She scanned the bathroom for a robe, but there was only a small bath towel hanging on the wall. Samantha wrapped herself in a small towel. She opened the bathroom door and asked into the room, Alex, are you in here? Alexander felt a pain in his stomach. He held a cigarette in his fingers. He hadn't had a good meal since he left the country, and he had been living on protein shakes for two days. He heard the sound and saw her small head peeping out from the cracked door. She scanned the room until her eyes met his. There is no robe in the bathroom, she said. Alexander took a drag from his cigarette. His face became covered by a curtain of smoke, and he looked at her, seemingly deaf to her remark. Alex? She beckoned. Alex! She said a little more loudly. Alexander! She finally cried. She was getting angry. He had already humiliated her by forcing her to protect Mia. He had swum through the sea for her, which had made up for his transgressions in her mind, but the way he was ignoring her infuriated her. He looked over slowly and said, I can only hand my wife her clothes if you call me your husband. You're so childish, she shouted. She was so angry that she imagined walking over to him and slapping him. He saw her face turn red, but he knew she wouldn't do anything to him. My clothes, she said hotly. Call me your hubby and I'll get them for you. Alexander extinguished his cigarette, poised to stand up. She slammed the door on him. The bathroom was quiet. Samantha sat on the toilet lid and stewed. She wanted to wait for him to go to the party and then find a steward to bring her clothes. He felt rejected by her refusal to call him hubby, and his face sank at the sound of her closing the bathroom door. He could see she was getting bolder. He didn't think she would have treated him in such a way before. After a while, he brought her clothes to the bathroom door and knocked. He wanted her to go with him to the party. Open the door, he said sternly. She didn't respond. He didn't need to see her to know that she was staring at the door as if she was staring at him. If you won't unlock it, then please come out here. His voice became even more serious. A few moments later, the bathroom door opened, and a small hand reached out with an upward palm. Thank you, she said awkwardly. She waited for him to pass her the clothes, but instead of fabric, she felt his warm hand touch hers. He grabbed her and gently pulled her out of the bathroom. Samantha wasn't completely covered, so she put her other hand against the wall to stop herself. Her bare shoulder was exposed in the doorway. Alexander! She yelled in protest. His eyes fell on her slender arm, and he saw the faint purple bruise that hadn't yet faded completely from her shoulder. He felt a sudden pang of guilt and asked, Does your shoulder feel better? Her face darkened, and as he gazed at her shoulder, she took the opportunity to snatch her clothes from his other hand. She changed into her dress behind the closed door. The dress was white, with a high collar and long sleeves. On the inside was a layer of fine satin, and the bottom of the dress was made of tiers of white gauze. She felt like a princess in it. 
Although formal dresses were typically for an engagement party on a ship, it was unusual for long sleeves to be worn. She knew the design of the dress was exceptional. She wondered where Alexander had gotten it. She had been in such a bad mood that she hadn't paid much attention to it before she put it on. She could hear him on the other side of the door. He could hear her inside of the bathroom. His words still swirled through her mind. Call me hubby and I'll give them to you. She silently cursed at him. He made her feel trapped. She practiced the way she might say it in her head. Hubby, give me my clothes. She thought the phrase, give me, might be too suggestive, and she changed it to hand me. The dress fit her perfectly. She felt a rush through her body when she thought about how he had personally taken her size and knew it well. It was almost eight o'clock when she left the bathroom. Her hair was half dry. She wasn't done up fancifully or wearing impressive makeup. She had a different, more natural kind of elegance and beauty. Alexander covered his handsome face with his mask. He took her by the hand and they walked out together. Where are we going? She asked. Let's go watch the show, he answered with a smile. The banquet hall was on the third floor of the ship. It was a spacious room, decorated beautifully with white roses and colorful balloons. Samantha followed Alexander inside, where the engagement party was well underway. Lily and Brady stood on the stage, smiling at their friends and family. Springfield's elites followed many rules of behavior, and the evening's earlier antics had been selectively forgotten. If the host didn't mention the episode, they wouldn't mention it either. They would save their gossip for later. Brady was smiling stiffly until he saw Samantha walk in. Alexander scanned the room, and a mischievous smile flashed across his face. What did you mean when you said the show? Samantha asked. The guests were all focused on Lily and Brady, and no one noticed Alexander and Samantha enter the party. Just wait, Alexander said as he played with her soft hands. A gift segment was planned for the engagement party, and Lorraine had prepared a video to play to welcome Lily into the family. The huge projection screen was turned on, and the video began to play. Instead of the elegant piano music Lorraine had used, deafening rock and roll blared from the speakers. On the screen was a group of people dancing, and the words Marbella 77 flashed. Marbella 77? Samantha asked, looking up at him, shocked. That was the night of Brady's bachelor party. That night, she had planned to record Brady, but Alexander had seized her and dragged her out of the club. It was not a good memory for her, and her face sank. She was unable to look at Alexander. Alexander looked at Samantha expectantly, but she didn't look back at him. He knew what the video was going to show because he was the one who had swapped it with Lorraine's video. The image of the dancers stopped, and a video of Brady at the bar started playing. Why are you rushing into a marriage again so soon? said a voice. The conversation in the video blasted over the stereo. So what if I get married? Brady replied, holding a beautiful young woman in his arms. He kissed her hard on the lips and said, That doesn't change anything. The video displayed a chaotic party. The guest watched Brady drunkenly try to rip off the woman's clothes. She coyly rebuffed Brady, and his friends who stood around him began to cheer. A wife is just for having my kids, taking care of my family. Brady continued over the speakers. The model laughed and said teasingly, I thought you were deeply in love with Lily. She stroked his arm on the giant projection screen. Get over here, Brady said as he pushed the model onto a chair. Oh, Brady, she said giggling. You taste different from my fiance, Brady said as he kissed her. Unfortunately, added another voice from the background. The scene looked rotten and dirty to the onlooking party guests. They found it unbearable to watch. She stole a quick glance at Alexander. His face looked hard and as cold as ice. His eyes looked like weapons pointed right at Brady. The content of the video was explosive and made Brady appear disgusting to those watching it. The party guests were in an uproar and began animatedly discussing what they were seeing. Turn it off! Lorraine roared, losing all her composure. Turn it off right now! Is there a virus in your video or something? 
A frantic member of the ship's staff asked her. I can't turn it off. The guests by the stage began to laugh. Brady! Billy cried out, turning to look at her fiancé with reproach. That's not me, he said. Baby, it's not me, it's fake! Brady was in a panic. He didn't understand how that video could have been shown. Mom, what were you thinking playing that? He asked Lorraine. That's not the video I made, she howled. To be safe, Lorraine had made the video herself. She knew she couldn't have made such a mistake. She couldn't understand what had happened. The Miller, Brown, and Jackson families were crowded around the stage in a state of chaos. The Millers tried their best to comfort Lily, while Lorraine scrambled for the reason for the video switch, and Brady furiously insisted that he had been framed. I didn't know Brady was like that, they heard a guest say. I wanted him to marry my daughter. Thank God he's marrying Lily instead. Most people had been under the impression that Brady was a gentleman. Very few knew about his reputation as a playboy. It was clear to them that the video Lorraine had made for Lily of her sweet son Brady was a hollow pretense. Samantha asked Alexander quietly, Did you do this? Alexander looked at her for a moment and then said, Yes. She realized that this is what he meant by the show. She guessed that the only reason he had been willing to participate in a family meeting was for the opportunity to switch the videos. She could see that he had sought to destroy Brady's image, as well as damage the reputation of the entire Jackson family, while potentially starting a feud between the Millers and the Jacksons. As she watched the mayhem on the stage and the couple's embarrassment, a feeling of satisfaction welled up in her heart. The Millers had forced her to marry someone she didn't love, and the Browns hated her. She considered Brady to be heartless and Lorraine to be mean. Watching the scene in front of her, she felt like they had gotten what was coming to them from her and Alexander. When they felt like they had seen enough, Alexander and Samantha started to leave. Alex, they heard Simon call. He seemed to appear out of nowhere and his hair was in disarray. Are you feeling all right? He asked. He looked at Alexander closely, probing for weakness in him. Everyone had seen Alexander swim, as well as holding Mia up above his head. They had seen that he wasn't a weak person. Alexander held Samantha by the waist with one hand, and with total transparency admitted, You guys were always the ones who said I was sick, not me. Simon staggered backward. He suddenly perceived the fierce young man as a threat. When Alexander returned home, the Brown family wanted to curtail his power in the family business, so they spread the rumor that he was sick. Friends of the Browns had begun to discuss the lie over time, but no one had ever confirmed his condition. Where are you going? Simon shouted after Alexander as he walked Samantha out. Everyone in the family is still here! His temples were throbbing in rage. Alexander smiled indifferently. Sam! Chris shouted as he rushed over to her, looking embarrassed. Why don't you go check on your sister? Lily's engagement had been a coup for the Miller's social standing, and the video had hurt them. The Jacksons were favored by the Browns, and the Millers had to hold their tongues with the Jacksons, even if they were furious with them. The Millers had Samantha, though, and they knew Alexander loved her. Chris hoped Samantha would come to stand with them, so the Jacksons would have to give them an explanation. They thought that Samantha's support would mitigate their humiliation in front of Springfield's upper crust. What can I do? Samantha asked, pretending not to see right through Chris's plan. You're her sister, Chris said. You should comfort her. It's better if I don't. I don't want to upset her or make her think I'm there to see her being made a fool of. She said, shaking her head. She might think I'm there for Brady. Samantha looked toward the stage. She didn't want to embarrass herself by getting mixed up in the scene. Chris's face turned red. He was angry, but he couldn't think of anything to say to make her go to her sister. Lily had insisted that Samantha had wanted to be with Brady, so she felt she had a legitimate excuse not to go to her. She could see Alexander smiling despite his mask, and she thought she saw a hint of pride on his face. He was thinking, my kitten is finally showing its claws to these so-called family members of hers. She's making progress. 
A few of the nearby female guests caught Alexander's handsome smile. They admired the half of his face they could see. The guests were all captivated by the drama in the banquet hall. Only a few people idled on the deck of the cruise ship. Where are we going? Samantha asked as Alexander led her to the deck. Home, he answered. She saw two boats parked besides the ship, and she noticed Jack on one of them communicating with the crew of the ship. She realized that he was the one who had brought her clothes. As she was about to disembark the ship for the smaller boats, she looked behind her to see David. David! She called out to him. Thank you so much for your help today. What's your number? He asked, taking out his phone. Alexander pulled Samantha by the hand and shot David a warning look. What do you want? Alexander asked with disgust. He had the feeling that David was someone to watch. Why are you so possessive? David asked in a derisive tone. I just want to be your friend. He knew who Alexander and his family were, but Alexander couldn't figure out who David was. Samantha ignored Alexander because David hadn't hurt her. He had saved her, and she liked him because he looked so similar to her friend David from school. Samantha started to give David her phone number. She planned to take him to dinner and buy him a gift to thank him. Halfway through speaking the numbers, Alexander kissed her to stop her from continuing. She was embarrassed because of the people watching them on the deck, and she tried to bat him away. I couldn't let you give him your number, he said with a mild tone of threat in his voice. I had to kiss you to shut you up. Samantha was so embarrassed she couldn't look at David. She apologized to him, looking at her feet, and pulled Alexander behind her onto the boat waiting for them. She felt humiliated. One of David's minions, who had been blending in as a crew member, walked over to him. "'Aren't you going to follow them?' he asked. "'For what?' he snapped. The murderous look had returned to David's face, transforming him into a terrifying person, unrecognizable to anyone who had seen him moments before. The minion was confused. "'I thought you accepted the order on the dark net to kill Samantha. Why did you save her?' he asked inquisitively. He watched David finger the black pendant that hung from his neck. "'Did you find the person who issued the order?' David asked. "'No,' the minion answered. "'All the information about it was erased. I tried, but it was impossible to find out who wants her dead.' "'Find someone to keep an eye on her,' David ordered, and put her name on the list. "'Sure thing, boss,' the minion said. "'If a person was on Obsidian's list, they were safe.' The list informed the rest of the underworld that the target was under their protection. And very few people were willing to provoke Obsidian. With just a few words, David had revealed his feelings about Samantha to his underlings. The minions didn't understand why, with his good looks, fame, and power, David would fall for a married woman. But it was clear to him that he had. He accepted that his boss had started to like her and didn't want to kill her but he had a difficult time accepting that he wanted to protect her. David watched the two small boats disappear into the vast ocean. When he could no longer see them, he looked back at his minion. Where's the information I asked you to get me? He asked. I emailed it to you, the man answered dutifully. What's the number? David asked, pulling out his phone again. As he read him the phone number, David recorded it on his phone. Then, he sent Samantha a text message, letting her know it was he who was texting her. He knew she was aware of his complex identity. Do you want me to make you a social media account? The young minion asked. You could connect with her that way. Social media? David repeated. He had never needed to use it. The minion saw the look of curiosity on his boss's face and quickly made one for him. David looked at his new profile and began to change his self-introduction. Jack and Tim each drove a boat. Alexander had taken Samantha with him on Jack's and had Jack jump over to Tim's boat to ride with him. The interior of the small yacht was very luxurious. There were couches set up in front of entertainment centers, laptops, and coffee tables with cakes, snacks, and red wine. Samantha and Alexander were alone on the boat, but she didn't want to talk to him. Jack and Tim had already made it to the shore, and only their boat was still at sea. 
Her curiosity finally got the better of her, and she asked him, Who's driving the boat? Alexander took off his mask and threw it beside him. He looked up at her with a gloomy expression, looking down again to take a drink of water, and sat silently. If you don't want to talk to me, that's fine, she muttered softly. She saw Alexander's face drop. She could see his temper rising, but she noticed that he was holding it inside instead of exploding. He walked over to the control panel, and she could see his skillful, quick movements as he operated it. An automated female voice came from the stereo. Automatic driving system has been activated. Latitude and longitude coordinates successfully acquired. She felt silly for asking him the question. The chop from the waves at night was very strong, even in their luxury yacht, and he staggered backward. Are you all right? She asked worriedly, running over to him. She lost her balance and almost fell over because of the lurching boat. He held her arm with one hand and grasped the handrail of the cabin with the other to steady them. Stop running, he scolded. His face was pale, and though he tried to hide his discomfort, she could see it in his hunched posture. Does your stomach hurt? She asked with a look of concern. No, Alexander replied bluntly. I'm fine. He sat down on the couch and took a sip of water. His lips regained some of their color. Samantha realized that she hadn't cooked for him in a long time. At first, it had been because he had gone abroad, and after that, they had been arguing. After drinking some water, the throbbing pain in his stomach eased up slightly. Then, it attacked again in full force. Samantha noticed the look of pain on his face and sat down beside him. She gently rubbed his stomach in little circles to try to relieve his pain. Do you have any medicine for your stomach? She asked after a while. I don't take medicine, he replied with a tone of disgust. In fact, before she had come into his life, he hadn't been so aware of his food intolerances. After discovering that he could eat her food, his aversion to other food had intensified. His body seemed to reject anything that wasn't prepared by his wife. Then what should we do? She asked. Why don't I call Jack? Or I can contact Dr. Haig. She had never taken care of anyone in that situation before, and she guessed the first aid kit on the yacht wouldn't have such specific medicine. Sam, are you worried about me? He asked, raising his head to look at her. His arm, which had been resting on the couch, wrapped around her waist and held her in his arms. She cried out in surprise, her lips accidentally brushing his earlobe. His breathing became tense. He was so tortured by the pain in his stomach that a thin layer of sweat appeared on his forehead. Sam, this is all your fault, you know, he said in a strained voice. Why would you say something like that? She asked, shocked. How dare he blame me, she thought. I'm trying to help him. She gritted her teeth in anger. Then she took a deep breath. She didn't want to argue with him. After a moment, she looked up and stared at him. Then she said, Alex, I want you to apologize to me. He looked at her in astonishment. Nobody had ever asked him that before. He had never apologized in his life. He ignored her words with a confused expression. Then he grabbed her chin and kissed her red lips. A memory flashed in Samantha's mind. Her eyes filled with tears, and she trembled slightly. She remembered the night that he had lost control and was too rough with her. He hadn't been able to control his emotions and was overcome by his desire. Alexander could feel her fear and knew what she was thinking about. He was reminded of how she had looked at him that night, and he felt a terrible pain in his heart. There was a moment of silence on the yacht as Samantha fell into deep thought. From the moment Brady's video had started, she understood what Alexander was trying to do. She knew why he had gone to the bar that night. That must have been a lot of work putting that whole thing together, she thought. I know that was his way of apologizing to me. But if we're going to stay together for any amount of time, that just isn't good enough. She didn't like that kind of manipulative way of dealing with things. It was almost as repulsive to her as violence. Alexander suddenly decided that he wanted to know more about the man who had saved her at sea. How do you know that man? He asked. His voice was low and slightly threatening. 
His name is David, she said. We helped each other out once, but I don't know him very well. Her explanation was brief. She couldn't tell him about what happened in the hospital and didn't want to go into great detail about their past. Alexander couldn't stop himself from snorting out loud. You don't know him very well, he thought. His eyes were glued to you the whole time. I don't believe you for a second. I don't want you contacting him again, he said angrily. Why not? She asked. They still have to thank him, she thought. The pain in Alexander's stomach had eased up a little. He touched her delicate face with his fingertips. He was obviously talking to you for a reason, he said. He paused for a moment and continued in a serious tone. Maybe he noticed that you weren't bad looking and wanted to sell your body. No, he wouldn't do something like that, I'm sure, she said. Her intuition told her that David wasn't that kind of person. But she had to admit that the time they had met in the supermarket, his attitude toward her had been suspicious. And when he appeared in the hospital, he had made it clear that he had to hide his identity. Do you know how much money he could get with a woman like you? He asked. She didn't know what to say. She shook her head with wide eyes. Do you have any idea how many young women are kidnapped every year? He asked. She swallowed hard. She didn't know the answer, but something told her that there must have been a lot of them. Are you afraid? He asked. She didn't respond, but he seemed satisfied with her reaction. He held her face in his hands and said, Stay by my side, and don't get involved with men like that. Samantha wanted to roll her eyes. And what about men like you? She thought. He's just saying these things to try to scare me. The ship arrived once again at the dock, and the passengers started making their way to shore. When Alexander reached solid ground, his stomach pain flared up again. It was even worse than when he had been on the yacht. Jack and Tim were there to escort him back home. Alex, can I take you to see Dr. Haig? Jack asked. He looked worried, but not very surprised. He seemed to have expected Alexander to have stomach problems. Samantha asked Jack, has he been suffering from a lot of stomach pain recently? Jack was about to answer when Tim took a step forward and said, Yes, miss. His stomach has been hurting for some time. It's probably because he hasn't been eating enough. Alexander gave Tim a dirty look as he thought, And why is that? Why haven't I been eating enough? Because Sam, my chef, has gone on strike. She felt guilty and said to Alexander, Why don't you go to Dr. Haig's place to see if there's something she can do? No, I won't go. He said defiantly, leaning on Tim to help him stand. Whatever you say, Alex, it's your body. I don't know why you're being so stubborn, she said with a sigh. She thought, for someone who's almost 26 years old, he can act like such a child sometimes. The weather that night wasn't bad. The sky was clear and filled with stars. Alexander looked at her and said suggestively, My stomach needs nourishment, not treatment. I didn't say I wouldn't cook for you, she said irritably. God, he's so dramatic, she thought. This could all go away if he would just apologize. The sea breeze was blowing through her hair. She tucked the loose strands behind her ears. After getting the answer he wanted, a cunning smile flashed through his eyes. Come over and help me, he said. Isn't Mr. Clark helping you? She asked in reply. Mrs. Brown, Tim said. There's no need to be so formal. You can call me Tim. She smiled at him warmly and said, Okay, Tim. Alexander narrowed his eyes and tried to control his jealousy. Samantha reluctantly helped Alexander over to the car. Then she helped him get inside, letting him rest his arm on her shoulder. Alexander's stomach problems were more serious than they had imagined. He had started to get stomach ulcers. Brenda was prescribed an intravenous drip, and he needed to stay in the hospital for observation. Samantha prepared him meals at home and took them to the hospital. She always arrived on time, but she never went in herself. She would ask someone else to take the food into his room. On the third day, Tim met her with a troubled expression on his face. Mrs. Brown, you should come with me and give Mr. Brown the food personally, he said. If you aren't there, he won't eat. Samantha had the impression that the members of staff looking after him were tense and in low spirits, 
which could only mean that their patient was not in a good mood. He'll eat when he's hungry, she replied. She saw that Tim didn't take the lunchbox. She put it on the table next to her and turned around to leave. Tim sighed. He didn't know if he should sympathize with Alexander because his wife was angry with him or with Samantha for continuously having to endure his bad attitude. He thought back to the last time that Alexander had been hospitalized. Samantha had been by his side the whole time, and he remembered them eating and chatting together. I wish it were like that now, he thought. Now it's really awkward. He took the food and started walking. Alexander's heart tightened as the door to the hospital room opened. He thought that it was going to be Samantha. When he saw that it was Tim, his expression turned cold. You again. What do you want? He asked. Tim nervously put his hand on the back of his neck and said, Sir, if my presence affects your appetite, I can ask Jack to come over instead. Tim wished he had higher qualifications so he could help deal with official business at Blue Whale Enterprises instead of serving his boss food at the hospital. Where's my wife? Alexander asked after glancing at the food in the lunchbox. He had a grumpy tone in his voice. She left, sir, Tim answered quietly. Didn't you give her my message? He asked, his face twisted in anger. Tim tried not to show pity on his face. He said, I did, but she just gave me the food and left. As he spoke, he felt more and more sorry for Alexander. He had had the impression that he was a respected man. After all, he was the son of the Brown family and was rich and powerful beyond compare. But his wife wasn't even there by his side. How sad, he thought. Brenda had said that his stomach would quickly recover, but at that moment, Alexander was so angry that he had an intense attack of pain. Sir, are you going to eat this? Tim asked carefully. No, he growled, waving his hand. Tim was about to walk out the door with the food when Alexander stopped him. Leave it on the table, he said. Yes, sir, Tim replied. Can't blame him for changing his mind, he thought. He hasn't eaten properly in days. He could tell that Samantha was his weak spot. She's the only one that would dare to go against his wishes and get away with it, he thought. And he doesn't seem surprised that she's not doing what he asked. It's so clearly not the first time. Tim placed the food on the table and left the room. Samantha had cooked everything to perfection. She had made the most tantalizing dishes she could think of. There were braised short ribs, spinach stuffed salmon and garlic butter, deer sirloin with a red wine reduction, and roasted pepper stuffed with mushrooms and parmesan. On the side was a rich pumpkin soup. Not only was there a lot of food, but the presentation was also spectacular. It was like eating takeout from a five-star restaurant. But she knew that it wasn't the kind of food he would eat. She was deliberately being difficult. Noah and Eric entered the hospital room and saw Alexander eating with a dark expression on his face. Did Sam make all that? It smells delicious, Noah said. He was beaming with joy. Where is she anyway? When he finished speaking, he received an angry look from Alexander. Uh, Alex, are you and Sam still fighting? He asked. Then, seeing that Alexander wasn't going to answer, he quickly changed the topic. But he was still dying to find out what was going on. He always loved the gossip. It looks like you'll be discharged soon. I bet you're excited to get out of here, he said. No, I'm not leaving, Alexander replied. He thought with a sneer, I'm not leaving until Sam does what I've asked. He was irritated because he couldn't even argue with her. She said she would cook for him, and that was precisely what she was doing. Her three meals came on time every day. The problem was that it wasn't the simple food he wanted. It was just like the food the chefs used to make at home. Eric realized that Alexander was in a bad mood, so he quickly got down to business. Alex, I've found some information about David Matthew. It's not good news, he said with a serious expression. He's from the U.S., but works internationally. He's an entrepreneur in foreign trade, and his company's market value has been ranked in the top 20 globally. Well, that's the identity he used at the engagement party, but it's not his only identity. He paused for a moment for dramatic effect. Then, he said, 
If I'm not mistaken, he's Boss D, the leader of Obsidian. Who would have thought that the world-famous businessman could be an underground assassin, right? Said Noah excitedly. As Alexander considered the new information, his expression turned cold. He knows who I am now, he said. If he is, in fact, the infamous Boss D, that might explain why Obsidian abandoned the contract for my assassination. It's because of Sam, he thought. The assassin almost hurt her, and Boss D, or David, was angry. It's really strange. How could Sam be linked to Boss D? Could it be that he's taken a liking to her? Noah asked. Alexander had been wondering the same thing. How could she possibly have a connection with a person like that? He thought. Alex, don't worry, Noah said quickly, trying to calm him down. This boss D guy's got nothing compared to you. Then he turned to Eric and said, Hey, Eric, do you think Alex is going to get sick of being with the boss of Blue Whale and become an underground killer? Eric rolled his eyes at him and said, I'm the head of IT and also a hacker. Do you think I'm going to get sick of my job and devote my life to hacking in the underground? Noah didn't know what to say. He couldn't find a reasonable argument for a comeback. Who knows, he thought. Stranger things have happened. People have many different faces. Alex, since you took Sam to Lily and Brady's engagement party, I don't think it'll be long before people find out your true identity, Noah said. He didn't know what Alexander was planning. At that point, almost everyone in the wealthy circles of Springfield, as well as the majority of people in the fashion world, knew that Samantha was his wife. Well, I guess I can't hide it forever, Alexander said. He was very powerful, but he couldn't keep a secret from getting out eventually. I knew it would come to this one day, he thought. If I protect her, it'll be hard to keep people from discovering who I am. He didn't fear his family finding out, but he wondered how they'd react. I can't wait to see the look on their faces, he thought. The engagement party was just the beginning. After Noah and Eric left, Alexander called Tim back in and asked him to prepare a package. It was to include a box of expensive Cuban cigars, a bottle of 50-year-old single malt whiskey, and the blueprint of a weapon that he had bought at an auction at a very high price. When it was all prepared, he had sent it over to David with the message, Thank you. He wanted to fulfill what he saw as his obligation of gratitude. He also wanted to send the message that David should back off. As she was finishing her meal, Samantha received a message from Ava. She agreed to meet up with her for coffee. Ava, what's wrong with your lips? Samantha asked, looking closely at her face. Huh? Ava asked. She touched her lips and realized that it was cracked open from her encounter with Mike a few days earlier. She said, Oh, it's nothing. Oh? Samantha asked, concerned. She could see that her friend was keeping something from her. Sam, are you all right? I heard that you fell into the water at the engagement party, Ava said. She was shocked when she heard the news. I swallowed a few mouthfuls of water. It wasn't really a big deal, she explained. I heard that Alex jumped in to save you. At least he has some conscience, Ava said in a serious tone. Samantha recalled that it was David that had saved her, but she didn't say anything. When she thought of him, she remembered the message that he had sent her, and she instinctively touched her phone. Now I have his number, she thought. Seeing that her friend had fully recovered, Ava was relieved and got straight to what she wanted to talk about, Brady and Lily. Although Ava was no longer part of the elite circle in Springfield, she had always been good at finding out hot gossip and always had the latest scoop. I heard that Lily invited almost everyone she knew, just to show off, she said. Social media was absolutely buzzing about it. Yeah, it was totally out of control, Samantha said. It was packed with people. And the whole thing about the video? Ava said excitedly. I just about died laughing. That was simply amazing. I mean, because Lily has flaunted everything so much before, she must be all the more embarrassed about it now. Samantha smiled and took a sip of her drink. She let Ava continue talking. I 
thought that Brady's family treated Lily like a treasure, Ava said. I can't believe that his own mother would make a video showing her son messing around with other women and show it to everyone. She started laughing. Then she added, It's not even important whether or not she made the video. It's just shocking that she actually played it in her name. Samantha replied, Well, it proves that Brady clearly doesn't take Lily seriously. Everyone is just waiting for them to make fools of themselves, Ava said, stirring her coffee. I'm surprised the two families are still able to work together under these circumstances. I mean, the engagement hasn't even been called off. Brady, the scum, even said the person in the video wasn't him. He said it only looked like him. Can you believe it? Samantha said. But he was framed. Lily's even backing him up too, saying that she trusts him completely. Ava said, rolling her eyes. It must be nice to be so shameless. You can get away with whatever you want. Samantha smiled and cupped her hands around her latte. She wasn't surprised about any of it. She said, It wasn't easy for my family to get on good terms with Brady's family. Lily's not going to let go so easily. She has very high expectations for this marriage and is just using Brady to get what she wants. She's already invested a lot of money and time into it. She wouldn't risk losing everything now. Samantha knew her half-sister very well. She's the most selfish person I know, she thought. She just has her own interests in mind and will pursue them no matter what the cost. If she saw the face of the man she gave up to get Brady, she would kick herself, Eva said, smiling. With the mention of Alexander, Samantha looked down thoughtfully at her drink. The two of them seemed to be in a cold war at the moment, and although that wasn't what she wanted, she didn't know how they were going to work it out. She just couldn't understand him. Eva could read her friend like a book and saw that she didn't want to talk about Alexander. She guessed that the two of them hadn't made up yet. As her best friend, she was on her side unconditionally, but if she didn't want to discuss it, she respected that. So she was happy when Samantha changed the topic. Oh, Ava, she said, suddenly remembering something important that she wanted to tell her. Guess what? Do you remember Aubrey Baker? You'll never guess who her boyfriend was. He was Alex's younger brother. Leonard? Ava asked, her eyes wide with shock. I figured that he was from a wealthy background, but I had no idea he was from a family as rich and powerful as the Browns. And I bet there are other secrets around what happened back then, Samantha said, leaning in secretively. For starters, as far as I understand, Leonard was quite the drinker. Alex had fully recovered by his fourth day in the hospital. The whole time he had been there, he hadn't seen Samantha once. A young nurse working that day nervously told Brenda that the patient in the VIP room had a foul expression on his face and wasn't willing to leave the hospital, even though he had recovered. Brenda had been in the hospital with Alexander every day. She had guessed what the situation was and called Samantha. Mrs. Brown, she said, your husband is ready to be discharged from the hospital. At the time that Samantha received the call, she was at Rock Hill Manor, reading a message from the Road to the Top competition organizers. She was informed that she was expected to attend a luxurious manor in Springfield two days later for the next stage of the competition. I'll have Jack go to the hospital and pick him up. He should be able to handle the discharge procedures, Samantha told her bluntly. Brenda rolled her eyes and said in a frustrated voice, But your husband is sitting on the bed as if he has taken root and has no intention of leaving. Mrs. Brown, I should tell you that keeping him here would be a spectacular waste of medical resources. Samantha didn't respond. Are you and Alex having an argument? Don't you want him to come home? Brenda asked. Samantha almost laughed out loud. Why on earth would I want him to come home? She thought. It made her suddenly realize that in all that time, she had never once considered getting a divorce. Since Brenda has made a point to call, I guess I shouldn't let him stay there, she thought. She had the feeling that Alexander hadn't been happy in the hospital. According to what Tim and Jack had told her, he wanted to stay there until she personally went to see him. 
She changed into an autumn dress and made her way to the hospital. Jack was standing outside the entrance, and as soon as he saw her, he welcomed her with a giant smile, looking relieved that she had shown up. In the room, Alexander was sitting on the couch reading a document. He angrily swiped his pen across the page and threw the documents aside. If the project manager were here, he thought, he would have some explaining to do. His back was facing the door. When he heard it open, he said, You can throw that document in the garbage. Call him back and have him redo it. Alexander felt the atmosphere in the room become heavy. When he didn't hear a response, he turned around to look, his brows still furrowed. Samantha was there, holding a small bag in her hands. She stood quietly in the doorway and said to him, Alex, you need to leave the hospital. His expression froze for a second before he turned back around. God, this man is stubborn, she thought. Does he need me to coddle him like a child? Jack came by, but noticed that she was there. He consciously retreated and closed the door to give them some privacy. Alex, if you don't come with me now, I'm leaving without you, she said. Alexander looked at her with an irritated expression on his face. That's something parents say to their kids, he thought. Sam, do you think I'm a child? he asked. Samantha curled her lips and said quietly, Thomas was very good when he was young. He wasn't nearly as difficult to deal with as you are. If you're not willing to see me, then go back home, he yelled. He could see that she didn't sincerely want to bring him back. Although her attitude was gentle, it was completely without emotion. You're right, she thought. I really don't want to bring you back home. I was happy with you gone. Samantha was a kind and gentle person, but she could be stubborn at times. She had a lot of pride, and she wasn't about to let him win. If he wants me to go back home, I'll go back home, she thought. She picked up the documents that he had thrown on the floor and put it on the coffee table gently. Then she turned around and walked out the door. Alexander was shocked. She's leaving just like that, he thought. He was so angry that he threw his pen across the room. After a while, he called Jack back in and asked him, Where's Sam? Jack felt sorry for him, but tried not to let it show. She returned to Rock Hill Manor, he said. She told me that you had asked her to leave. Alexander gritted his teeth and scowled. Jack added, By the way, I've been informed that the next stage of the Road to the Top competition will be held the day after tomorrow, and it will run for a week. When he finished speaking, he saw Alexander's face turn red with anger. In the past, she would have asked me first if she could go, Alexander thought. He considered what he should do. She's going to go to that competition, and if I don't leave the hospital, I won't see her again for over a week. I could forbid her to go, but if I do that, and she's stuck at Rock Hill Manor all that time, she's going to be extremely upset and make my life miserable. He suddenly stood up and said to Jack, Help me get my things together. I'm getting out of here. He walked a few steps and then stopped and said, On second thought, go and get a special cake made. Sir? Jack asked, confused. It isn't anyone's birthday today, he thought. Then he added, What kind of cake would you like? Alexander looked at him bitterly, but didn't answer. Jack didn't ask any more questions. He'd already guessed whom and what the cake was for. Samantha didn't expect that less than three hours after she'd returned home, Alexander would walk through the door. He came in carrying a square blue box in his hand. She greeted him politely, but didn't say much more. She looked for a moment at the box, and then turned away, uninterested. He felt like he was about to explode from anger. She's getting on my last nerve, he thought. Come here, he said, putting the cake on the coffee table and gesturing to her. Open it. Her eyes opened wide in surprise as she opened the box. Cake? Is it your birthday? She asked. No, I bought it for you, he said. Thank you, but I'm not hungry now, she replied dryly. Samantha liked to eat desserts, but she rarely went out of her way to buy them. Most of the time, she would make whatever she had a craving for. He pursed his thin lips together as he tried to keep his temper in check. She could see his anger, but she didn't say anything. 
When she realized that she didn't care how much she had upset him, she felt a burst of satisfaction. Eat it now, he commanded with a frown. Samantha wasn't in the mood to have a confrontation with him, so she got out a spoon and took a bite of the cake. The outer layer was a chocolate mousse that melted in her mouth. Inside, there was a soft, rich cheesecake mixed with a hint of white wine and lemon juice to balance the sweetness of the chocolate. Samantha had a refined taste for desserts and was hard to please, but she found it surprisingly delicious. She could tell it was the work of a master chef. Keep eating, he said after she stopped. It's for you. Finish it. Alex, I can't eat this whole thing alone, she said. She didn't want to talk to him, but couldn't stop herself from saying something. Does he want me to gain 10 pounds before the competition, she thought. He considered her small appetite and changed his mind. Eat half then, he said. Why should I even eat half? What's wrong with him? She thought. She happened to be a little hungry, and it tasted surprisingly good, so she took another bite. She was happy that she typically didn't gain weight easily. She knew that if she did, her career would have been ruined by food long before. She ate until she reached the center of the cake, where she found a piece of edible candy paper hidden inside. What's this? she asked, curious. She dug it out with her spoon and noticed that it had words written on it. She opened it up, and on the inside she read, I'm sorry. She was confused for a moment. Then she remembered that she had asked him to apologize to her. She turned around to confirm it with him, but he had already stood up and walked out of the room, taking big strides. Alex, this, she started to say, but he didn't seem to hear her. Or at least, that's what she thought, because he didn't stop walking. Alex, she called after him, but he quickened his pace. He walked out of the room and slammed the door behind him. She stared in the direction he had left for a few seconds. Then, she looked again at the candied paper in her hands. He's apologizing to me, right? She thought. Then, why did he run away after? Why does a simple apology have to be so difficult? She thought about it for a while. With his personality, background, and status, he's probably never apologized in his life, she realized. After having been in a bad mood all day, considering what had just happened, she couldn't stop herself from laughing out loud. The sweet cake, together with an awkward apology she had just received, made her feel better. She thought with a smile, I'm probably the only person in the world who's received an admission of guilt from that man. By dinner time, Alexander still hadn't appeared. Samantha had made him something special, and it was getting cold. She waited for him until 10 o'clock, and he still hadn't descended the stairs. So, she covered his food, washed up the dishes, and prepared to go to bed. If she had looked on the balcony, she would have seen the scarlet glow of his cigarette not far away. He had been there all evening, smoking one cigarette after another. When he finally put the last butt in the ashtray and walked down the staircase, he decided that he was hungry. So he turned the corner towards the dining room. Sir, Mrs. Brown made dinner for you, but it's cold now, a member of the staff on the night shift said. She had made him homemade chicken noodle soup with vegetables, grilled shrimp, and a chicken casserole with rice. She had been sure to cook food that would all be gentle on his stomach. It had already gone cold, but he thought it looked very appetizing. As he got closer, his mouth started to water at the smell. Finally, he thought, it's the same kind of simple food she used to cook before. It instantly put him in a good mood, and he ordered the staff member to warm it up for him. She was surprised that he was willing to eat cold leftovers. She expected him to tell Samantha to cook something fresh. After eating to his heart's content, Alexander returned to his room. There was a small bump in the middle of the oversized bed, and in the light of the moon, he could see her soft hair spread out on the pillow. Seeing that image, he finally relaxed after having been tense for quite some time. The corner of his mouth raised slightly as he walked into the bathroom to wash up before getting into bed. He saw her bury most of her face under the blanket as he approached. What's wrong? he asked. He climbed into bed, placed his big hand on her stomach, and pulled her tightly into his embrace. She quickly turned around to face him. 
In the dim light, he could see her big eyes looking straight into his. Alexander held his breath and said in an awkward voice, You weren't sleeping? He had deliberately waited for her to fall asleep before coming to bed. Samantha raised herself up to look at him. She blinked and said in a soft voice, I was waiting for you. It may have been because it was dark, but he thought he sensed a bit of laughter in her eyes. An unnatural expression flashed across his face, and he became even more serious. Why were you waiting for me? He asked. Alex, let's stop this, she said. Look, I accept your apology. I also want to apologize for my rude behavior these last few days. Please forgive me. His face darkened. What kind of nonsense is she talking about? He thought. She deliberately made me angry at the hospital the whole time I was there, and now she's seriously begging me for forgiveness? He felt like she was treating him more like a roommate than a husband. When did I apologize to you? He asked. I didn't, and I won't. After holding in his anger for such a long time, he wasn't willing to give in after her one little statement. But he also didn't want to say anything too unpleasant to make her angry again, or to make her cry. Yes, you did, with the cake, she said. She could tell that he was just being stubborn. Jack bought it, he said. But who told him to buy it? She asked under her breath. Look, apologizing isn't a matter of losing to someone. No one's going to laugh at you. I'm not going to laugh at you. Why is it so hard for you? Alexander took a breath and narrowed his eyes. She's not going to give up, he thought. Sam, if you make me angry again, he started to say. He didn't know what he was going to use as a threat, but his eyes had already landed on her red lips. She covered her mouth, but after a few seconds, she let go again. After the night that they had slept together, she realized that some level of intimacy was probably going to be inevitable. They were married, after all. Of course, she always had the right to refuse, but she also wanted to try to make the marriage work. Then go to sleep, she said, pulling herself back into the blanket. A moment later, she said, good night, before turning around to end the conversation. And what about me, he thought. I have this beautiful woman in my arms, and she expects me to just fall asleep. He looked at the back of her head and pinched the bridge of his nose as he realized she was starting to stand up to him more every day. It wasn't in his favor because it meant that there was something that he had no control over. Yet, he wasn't entirely unhappy with the thought. In fact, he felt rather proud of her. He finally realized that, although it seemed like a recipe for trouble, it was preferable to what he had had before, and he would gladly endure it. The following day, when Samantha woke up, Alexander wasn't in the room. There was no one downstairs. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Mr. Brown went to work early this morning, Jim said when he saw that she was looking for him. She looked at the time and noticed that he had left an hour earlier than usual. Then what did he eat for breakfast? She asked. His stomach seems to be feeling better, she thought. But if he doesn't take good care of it, it won't be long before it starts hurting again. He didn't eat anything, I'm afraid, Jim said with a sigh. You know, last night he ate your dinner warmed up. I've been working with him for over 20 years, and that was the first time he's ever been willing to eat food that had been reheated. And it was only because you made it. Jim's just trying to make me feel sorry for Alex, she thought. She smiled warmly and said, You don't have to do that, Jim. Alex and I have worked out our differences. We're not fighting anymore. Well, why didn't you say so earlier? He said, giving her a wink. What an old fox, she thought, laughing. He's still got some tricks up his sleeve. He smiled at her and said, Very good, very good. I'm glad to hear it. She thought that Jim was very kind and sweet. She had grown quite fond of him in her short time there. Samantha went to the kitchen to make Alexander some food. She made two quiches with green onion, ham, and egg, and baked a batch of blueberry muffins. She put it together into a lunchbox and was just about to ask a housekeeper to have it sent to him when she realized something. Why did Alex go to the company so early today? She thought. Could it be that he was angry last night when I brought up his apology? She brushed the thought out of her head. 
Since we've worked everything out, there's no reason for me not to send this to him myself, she thought. She decided to bring it to him personally. When she arrived at Blue Whale Enterprises, she once again marveled at how impressive it looked on the inside. As soon as she stepped into the lobby, the assistant approached her to ask if she needed any help. I came to deliver breakfast to the boss. Is he in? Samantha asked. The assistant didn't give her an answer right away. Instead, she gave Jack a call first. While she was waiting, Samantha received an unexpected call from her father to ask if she wanted to go out for breakfast. She was about to make up an excuse to reject his offer when he said he needed to talk to her about Thomas, so she reluctantly agreed. Miss, you can go in now, the assistant said with a hint of jealousy in her voice. Like many other people, she wanted to get closer to Alexander, but hadn't had the chance. There weren't many people who could show up at his door and be allowed inside. Oh, sorry, I suddenly had something urgent come up. Can I ask you to take this up for me? Samantha said apologetically. Me? The young woman replied with an excited expression. It's my lucky day, she thought. She answered, of course I can. Jack could tell the day before that Alexander had been eager to see Samantha. But when he informed his boss that she was coming to deliver food, he asked him coldly, who told her to come here? Jack was confused. He didn't understand how his attitude could change so drastically in less than 24 hours. As Jack was hesitating, Alexander asked him, how do I look? Jack looked at him surprised. He thought, just a second ago, you were angry that she had come here, and now you're worried about how you look? You look good, sir, he answered. Then, he felt like it wasn't enough. He added, but your dark gray suit jacket might be better. The one you have on might look too serious for your wife. Alexander was satisfied with his answer and changed his jacket. Bring her in, he said. That's it for today, guys. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.